Now, live, coast to coast, the world of sports, finest of the world's sports features 52 weeks of the year. Major League Baseball, the Canadian of American Triple Crowns of Racing, Canadian track and field events, as well as many other sports of championship caliber. And this afternoon, the greatest show in football, featuring the stars of the National Football League in the game's most thrilling action. Today, the NFL championship game between the New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers from City Stadium in Green Bay. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Hal Kelly, your host for the afternoon. In just a moment, we'll switch to Green Bay. The first half of today's World of Sport, featuring the greatest show in football, is presented for your enjoyment by the Carling Breweries Limited, brewers of Carling Black Label Beer. Now let's switch to Green Bay. Hello, everybody. I'm Lindsey Nelson with Chris Schenkel here at City Stadium in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The first time that the Pro Championship has ever been played here in Green Bay. And of course, it's a big day. The temperature is about 20 degrees. The field has been covered all week with a tarp and a layer of hay and about 14 inches of snow on top of that. It's all been peeled off and the field's been brushed off and it's fairly fast. There are some frozen spots. And when the team's warmed up, the Green Bay Packers were wearing cleats. The New York Giants were split about 50-50, half in cleats and half in sneakers. This is the first million dollar game in the history of professional football. More than 40,000 fans at $10 a head in the stands, $615,000 for the television fee. And to tell you about this million dollar game, here is Chris Schenkel. Thank you, Lindsey Nelson, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Two teams, the best in football, the Packers and the Giants, who have a great deal of similarities. Offensively, the Packers are tops in the National Football League, while the Giants finish second. The attacks are somewhat similar. Green Bay relying on a running game, which opens up their passing attack. While the New York Giants have used the forward pass, thrown mostly by Y.A. Tittle to Schaffner, Roth, and Walton, and then in turn, the running game has featured Alec Webster. If you're a devotee or a fan of good line play, and especially the guards that pull and block, watch Fred Thurston, number 63 of the Green Bay Packers, and number 66, Jack Stroud of the New York Giants because they are the finest. Defensively, the Giants and Packers also compare favorably. Four big men up front. Coaching-wise, both Vince Lombardi and Ali Sherman were once New York Giant assistants. This is the third meeting of these two teams in 1961, and we expect a thriller, so wherever you are, I know you're going to enjoy it. Right now, back to Lindsey Nelson. In the field, the playing of the National Anthem with the Sullivan Wallen Post American Legion Color Guard and the Army Color Guard and the Green Bay Packer Band and the Lake Band Color Guard on the field, along with the Golden Girls and the Packerettes, the Star Spangled Banner, as we're getting set for the National Football League Championship game, and the lights have been turned on here at City Stadium in Green Bay, Wisconsin, at the very outset of the afternoon. It is cloudy right now. The prediction is that it will remain that way throughout the afternoon, possible scattered snow flurries. We'll have more of the pregame activities here at Green Bay City Stadium after this message. And right now, it's our pleasure to once again introduce our guest, Curly Morrison. He used to play in the National Football League, and Curly, you've been in a championship game. Uh, you know what it feels like, I guess. Well, it's a great thrill for these 70 football players who we'll be watching all afternoon, Hal. I can vouch for that. What's your analysis of today's game? Well, Hal, I think uh, Chris Schenkel summed it up pretty cleverly there. Uh, both teams are similar. Of course, naturally, they're both championship ball clubs. We know that. Regardless of their characteristics, whether they're a more strong running or passing team, the outcome of the day's game will be determined by, basically, by the fundamental soundness of, of the winning club. My personal opinion is that Green Bay is probably one of the most fundamentally sound football teams in their techniques of any team I've seen in the National Football League. Going back to their previous games with the Giants this year, which incidentally Green Bay won both of them with a similar score, an exhibition game and a game we saw a few weeks ago, 20-17. to 17. 
There were 140 plays played uh, in the last game. Green Bay had the ball 77 times and New York 63. And on the basis of that ball control, I would have to pick Green Bay. All right, let's go back to Green Bay. As all is in readiness, and a good many of the fans still are standing here. They are dressed warmly, of course, for this temperature, and the predominant color is red to indicate that we are in the deer hunting country. Somebody said this morning that the crowd is uh, dressed so that it looks a great deal like a church service on the morning with the deer season open. Right now, the lanes have been formed, and the New York Giants, the visiting team, champions of the Eastern Conference of the National Football League, will be introduced first. This stadium was first opened in 1957. It replaced the old city stadium, a structure made primarily of wood that became one of pro football's historic landmarks for many years. The stadium normally seats 38,663, but a couple of thousand temporary seats were added for today's game to run the capacity up to something over 40,000. Tickets were priced at $10 each, no matter where they were located, behind the goal post or on the 50-yard line. The price, $10 each, and they have turned out here this afternoon. And a little twirling color in the pregame festivities. The twirler is Mary Van Dyce from Sturgeon Bay. In recent years, no football field has received as much loving care and attention as this one has in the past few weeks. See, the Packers depend a great deal on a strong running game, and if at all possible, they wanted to prevent the likelihood of a frozen field. So a tarp was spread over the field, then a layer of hay, and then about 14 inches of snow fell on top of that. The temperature got down to 15 below zero a couple of days ago, but the covering kept the field from entirely freezing. The snow was removed in baskets and by hand in order to keep the heavy equipment from tracking the unfrozen turf. The hay was removed this morning and fed into hay balers right here in the stadium. Then the tarp was taken off, and then commercial pressures were brought on attached to Jeep. The field was entirely braced and was remarked just about one hour ago. As is usual in any championship contest, the experts have dissected every available bone of contention in an effort to forecast the outcome. When these two teams met in Milwaukee during the regular season, the Giants were unable to stop the Packers' ground game as Jimmy Taylor gained more yardage than any Packer had ever gained in a single game. He did it primarily in the Giant defensive area, patrolled by Rosie Greer, Andy Robustelli, and linebacker Tom Scott. Well, the Giants, of course, figured to tighten up that gap. The question is, if they do, will they leave a gap open somewhere else? Perhaps the Packers will counter by going to the air. The Giants, of course, have a pretty good ground game themselves, led by Alex Webster and Joel Wells. They have a fine passing attack with Tittle and Connolly throwing, Schaffner wrote and Walden catching. Of course, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what the extent of Jimmy Taylor's injury is against the Los Angeles Rams in the final game of the season. Taylor sustained a kidney injury, and uh, just uh, how serious it is is something that won't be known until the ball game gets underway here this afternoon. The officials coming out onto the field right now. The referee this afternoon is George Rennick. He'll be wearing number 52. The umpire is Jim Beersdorfer, number 17. The head linesman is John Heiberger, number 48. The back judge is Frank Luzar, number 14. And the field judge is Charles Sweeney, number 22. And so they are coming out to look over the field, preparatory to the arrival of the players here. And it might be well to point out here, as we are waiting for the arrival of players, that this game is played under a sudden death rule, meaning that if the regulation playing time ends and the score is tied, then after a three-minute rest, they will resume playing, and the first team that scores by any means, touchdown, field goal, or safety, is the winner. So we will have no tie game here this afternoon. We will have a winner before the day is done. And for each individual member of the winning team, it will mean something over $5,000, for each member of the losing team, it will mean something over $3,000. The prices have gone up since the first championship game was played in 1933 when members of the winning team got $210 each. 
The men charged with handling the ball most in this cold, cold weather are the quarterbacks, of course. Bart Starr for the Packers, Y.A. Tittle and Chuck Connolly for the Giants. Starr is from Alabama, Tittle's a native of Texas who played in Louisiana, Connolly from Mississippi. All Southern boys in the cold, cold north this afternoon. Since the National Football League started playing championship games in 1933, the home team has lost only eight times in 27 games. One game was played on a neutral site as the Packers met the Boston Redskins in New York on one occasion for the championship. These Green Bay Packers are one of only two remaining charter members of the National Football League, the other the Chicago Bears. So it's a big day here in Green Bay as finally they have the championship game played right here in City Stadium. And you get a look at the crowd now and how they are dressed for the cold weather, all bundled up. The Chamber of Commerce, of course, has called the city Tidal Town, USA, and there are banners across the streets and signs in every store window. And I can tell you that if the Green Bay Packers win this ball game this afternoon, it will be a New Year's Eve celebration in Green Bay, the likes of which you have seldom seen. Matter of fact, the local citizen says that if they win, the celebration in Pittsburgh when uh, the championship was won there will look like a Sunday school pink tee. Now you're looking outside the ballpark at the parking lots, which incidentally were swept clear of snow also, as well as they could. And you can see the snow across the road there and uh, in the neighborhood. The Green Bay Packers earlier this week worked out one afternoon when the temperature was 10 below zero. So uh, this is something of a heat wave as the temperature at 12 noon was up to 19 officially. And right now it's up to about 20 degrees as we are awaiting the kickoff here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Teams, of course, very likely are adjusting equipment. On the bench, they will have no problem because uh, infrared heaters have been installed uh, in dugout-type reflectors behind the benches, and we are told that along in that area, the temperature will be around 7 degrees in the bench area. You can see them there behind the policemen. There they are, the reflectors and uh, the infrared heaters. And so uh, it may be some difficulty getting a man into the ball game this afternoon. It's going to be very warm and cozy over there in the bench area. And Finley, uh, as Green Bay prepared for this ball game, they expect traffic that they are not used to handling, and so extra policemen were brought over from Sheboygan and Manitowoc and Nino and Ishkaish to help handle the traffic, and I should suspect also to see the ball game. Any moment now, we'll have the introduction of players as they have come into the runway. And you can see them milling around there in the runway right now. And we'll have them coming down in just a moment as they get them organized and bring them onto the field one by one. It's the New York Giants, of course, as the visiting team in white, and the Green Bay Packers in the dark jerseys as you see them. The Giants as the visitors will be introduced first. The offensive unit is being brought down there. 79 is Rosie Brown, 66 is Jack Stroud, 55 is Ray White Tucker, 53 is Greg Larson, 85 is Del Schaffner. They'll be brought out in just a moment. Shaking taking place down there in the runway right now also. Those Giants, of course, were surprise winners in the Eastern Conference this season. None of the preseason predictors placed them any higher than third. Most everybody saw the Cleveland Browns and the Philadelphia Eagles or even the St. Louis Cardinals as the top team in the East. But the Giants improved steadily. They came through a second-half schedule as tough as can be imagined. They met the Packers, the Eagles twice, the Browns twice coming down the stretch, and they came out with the division title. And their rookie coach in his first year as head coach, Al Sherman, was named Coach of the Year in the National Football League. And now, the New York Giants are being introduced. At center, number 55 is Ray Wysaka, 6'1", 230, from Northwestern. The right guard, number 66, is Jack Stroud. He is 6'1", 235 pounds, from Tennessee. 
Number 62 at left guard is Darrell Dest. He is a 245-pounder from North Carolina State. Number 53 at right tackle is Greg Larson. He's a rookie, 6'2", 240 from Minnesota. Number 79 at left tackle is Rosie Brown. He is 255 pounds from Oregon State. Number 80 at right end is Joe Walton, 205 pounder from Pittsburgh. And number 85 is the left end, Bill Schaffner, 185 pounds from Baylor. Number 44 is Kyle Roach, the right halfback, 200 pounder from SMU. Number 29 is the fullback, Alex Webster. He is a 220-pounder from North Carolina State. Number 28 is the left halfback, Joel Wells, 198 pounds from Clemson. And the quarterback is number 14, Y.A. Tuttle, 195-pounder from Louisiana State University. Those are the New York Giants. So there go the Giants. And we'll have now the introduction of the hometown Green Bay Packers. The center, number 51, is Jim Ringo, a 235-pounder from Syracuse. Number 75 is the right guard, Boris Gregg, a 250-pounder from SMU. The left guard is all-pro Fred Thurston, number 63, from Valparaiso, 250-pounder. Right tackle number 78 is Norm Masters, 250 pounds from Michigan State. The left tackle number 76 is Bob Skaronski, 250 pounds from Indiana. Number 88 is the right end Ron Kramer, 230 pounder from the University of Michigan. The left end is number 85, Max McGee, 205 pounder from Tulane. Flanker back is number 86, Boyd Dollar, 220 pounder from Colorado and on leave from the Army. The left half is Paul Horning, number five, 215 pounder from Notre Dame and on leave from the Army. The fullback is Jim Taylor, number 31, 215 pounder from LSU. And the quarterback is Bart Starr, number 15, a 200 pounder from the University of Alabama. There are the Green Bay Packers, repeat champions of the Western Conference. We've had the starting lineup. We'll be set for the opening kickoff of today's game in just a moment. They're often running at the county fair, and for every man racing, the afternoon will be packed with excitement. Sitting between those two flashing wheels is a real thrill, a thrill that makes harness racing a sport that sets the pace in pleasure. there's no question about it. If you're looking for something that sets the pace in pleasure, here it is. And now we're getting set for the simulated coin toss at the center of the field. As you know, in the National Football League, the coin is actually tossed about 30 minutes before game time. And then the simulated toss takes place now for the information of the crowd. Coming out, Kyle Roth and Andy Robustelli for the Giants, the co-captains, and for the Green Bay Packers, Bill Forrester and Jim Ringo. George Rennix is the referee. And the indication here that the New York Giants won the toss and elected to receive. The Green Bay Packers elected to defend the goal to your left, so the Packers will kick off and defend the goal to your left. The Giants will receive and defend the goal to your right. For those of you who like to keep track of such things, the Green Bay Packers lost the toss. They lost the toss last year at Philadelphia. We pause now for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. There, ladies and gentlemen, you see the Green Bay Packers today wearing dark green jerseys, gold pants, gold helmets, while the New York Giants are in white, red numerals, blue helmets, and silver football pants. It'll be uh, number three, Ben Agajanian, the eight-year veteran from New Mexico State that will be kicking off for the Green Bay Packers. Agajanian joining the Packers late here in 1961, 
taking uh, some of the work off the shoulders of Paul Hornan, who arrived this week from uh, Fort Riley, Kansas, to continue preparations for this big championship game. Field lights are on. The field itself in perfect condition as we have a ground view. Look at 35 Bobby Gators and 28 Joel Wells who await Agajanian's kick. The minute that toe hits the football, the clock starts and the game is underway. And here is Agajanian's boot. It's going to the far side. It's fielded there by Joel Wells. He's up to the 20, now the 25, then the 30, and he's brought down there and hard. It appeared that the Giants might try to let that ball go out of bounds, and it caused a little mix-up on the part of the Packer uh, kicking team coming up field as Ray Nitschke, number 66 of Illinois, made the tackle for the Green Bay Packers. Here now are the New York Giants. They have a first and 10. The ball is just across their own 30-yard line. Y.A. Tittle, 14-year veteran, his first championship game as the quarterback. Coming to the near side, this is Dell Schaffner. Kyle Roach to the opposite side. Joel Wells, number 28, carried the ball, but met with that big forward wall of Green Bay, led by Henry Jordan and Bill Quinlan. There is Wells of Clemson, former star in the Canadian League as we look at the Green Bay Packers now, who have up front uh, 87 Willie Davis, 83 Quinlan, the ends. Hanner and Jordan are the tackles. The New York Giants now. They have a second down to nine from their own 31 as Rhodes to the far side. Webster and Wells, the setbacks. The draw. Webster losing his footing, and right there with him was Tom Bettis, number 65. Alec Webster, number three rusher in the National Football League, is down at about the 32-yard line, where will now be a third down and eight for the New York Giants. No score in the ball game. The deep men for the Green Bay Packers on the left in the dark jerseys, Griminger, Simak, Wood, and Wittenden. Y. Tittle, number 14, who often has come up with a big third down play, has a third and eight from his own 32. His first pass attempt to Webster. Webster up to the 35, and is down at about the 37. Not enough. For well, the first down is Dan Curry, number 58 of Michigan State, was there to bring Webster down. So it will be a fourth down for New York, the Eastern Conference champion and the Green Bay Packer fans give the defensive team a round of applause. It's a fourth down and three. Going back deep now for the Packers, Willie Wood and Luke Carpenter, number 33. Back to kick for the New York Giants on the right, Don Chandler of Florida. That's about a 44-yard average. He's kicking with the wind to his back. End over end. Carpenter blocking as Willie Wood has it at the 23, up to the 25. Wood, number 24, hit by Chuck Jenneret, number 72, and Larry Hayes of Vanderbilt. So now the Packers, before this huge crowd in Green Bay, Wisconsin, have the ball, first and 10, and George Rennick, the referee, has spotted it on the Green Bay 26. For the Packers, Bart Starr of Alabama, the quarterback, number 15, the setbacks will be tailored. 31, and Horning number 5. Max McGee is flanked to the far side. Boyd Dowler is set away to the near side with Ron Kramer, the tight end. Jim Ringo, the center, from the 26. Slight delay to Paul Horning, number 5. The leading scorer in the National Football League. He's stopped by Rosie Greer and Jim Catcavage, number 75. There is Horning, number 5, going back to the Green Bay huddle. Number 75, Forrest Gregg, as we now look at the giant defensive team, number one in the National Football League, allowing the fewest points scored in the third meeting. And they know about the Green Bay Packers. Now with the ball at the 28, no score in the game. It's a second down and eight for Green Bay with Dowler to the near side and McGee to the far side. Horning again. And that ground game of Green Bay is moving upfield as Tom Scott, 82, Dick Modulewski, 77, for end of the play for New York. Harding, who has carried the ball both times, has advanced it now up to about the 34, a six-yard gain. It's third down and two. The Giants, 75, Cat Cabbage, 89, Livingston, 49, Erich Barnes. The opposite side cornerback is uh, Dick Lynch, number 22. Here you see star 15, Ringo 51, 31 is Jim Taylor, number 70 in white is Sam Huff with a third down and two from their own 34, Bart Starr. Eight 
And doing yeoman duty is Paul Horning of Notre Dame and Cat Tavis, 75 and 70 Huff, are in on the tackle. And the Packers did not make enough for the first down as Erich Barnes also helped stop Horning's forward progress. So with the ball at the 35, it is a fourth down and one for Green Bay. There you see 40, Joe Morrison going deep. And on the near side, Joel Wells, number 28. Boyd Dowler is back to punt for Green Bay. The first Green Bay punt, no score in the game. 10 minutes, 45 seconds left in the first quarter. A booming punt into the wind as Wells has it on the 10. Elijah pit stop number 28. The receiver, Joe Wells, as a marker, is down. George Rennick's number 52. That's Dick Lynch, number 22. And let's see what the penalty will be. Looks like a uh, perhaps a procedure penalty against the Green Bay Packers as Rennick's now comes back to the line of scrimmage, which was the 35. He's in the vicinity now of the 30. And here he is with a procedure signal against Green Bay and, of course, accepted by the New York Giants. So it will be a fourth down coming up, fourth down and six from about the 30-yard line. Dowler's punt was a honey. It came all the way from his own 26 to the giant 10. There's Dowler on the left, kicking into about a 12-mile-per-hour wind coming out of the southwest. Now, again, he gets off a good one. This one about 15 yards shorter at the 24. Morrison has it and is down at the 30. And again, it's Elijah Pitts, that speedster, the rookie. Number 22 in the dark jersey that was in on the tackle. So the New York Giants get the ball for the second time here in the first quarter with about 10 minutes to go and no score. And they have a first and 10 just across the 30-yard line, and that's where they tried to start a drive the first time they had the ball. Schaffner, number 85, coming to the near side. At the top of your screen, 44, Kyle Roach. The setbacks are Wells and Webster. From the 30, Y. Tittle. Joe Wells on a fine balanced run up the middle. Advances to about the 39. Wells has come along late in the 1961 season. He was stopped on his forward progress by Tom Bettis, the middle linebacker for the Packers. The ball is at 39. It is a second down and one as Wells picked up nine yards on the play. Rote and Joe Walton are to the far side, Schaffner to the near side. That's Wells up close to the line, the halfback. As the fullback carries, going for the first down, let's see if he made it. The Packers ball hawking, trying to steal the ball. As Ray Witeka was blocking on the play, George Rennix now calls for an official time for a measurement. So the headlinesman, John Heiberger, and his crew will come in from the far side of the field to measure. The ball is across the 40, as you see, between the 40 and 41. No score. Nine minutes left in the first quarter. First down, New York. The uh, initial first down of the ball game. Up front for the Giants from top to bottom across the tee, Greg Larson, Jack Stroud, Ray Witeka, Daryl Dess, and Roosevelt Brown. Schaffner and Walton the ends, Roach the flanker back, Webster and Wells the setbacks with Tittle at quarterback. Packers on the left, dark jerseys, Davis, Hanner, Jordan, and Quinlan up front. Roach goes to the far side, first and ten for the Giants, let's call it from their own 41. The fake to Webster who blocks and the pass is a square out pattern to Kyle Roach who couldn't hang on to the ball. Dan Curry covering for Green Bay. There's Kyle, uh, he's wearing a sweatshirt under his uh, jersey. Sort of blue in color to keep those arms warm, and he couldn't hang on to that pass, so it's an incompletion, second down and 10. The ball near the 41. No score. Eight minutes, 40 seconds left in the first quarter. Some of the linemen uh, wearing gloves to keep those hands warm out on the field. Others not. The ends, of course, are bare hands out there. Second and 10, shopping to the near side. Joel Wells of Clemson carrying on the play. 74, Henry Jordan. 
Coming in, number 74, on Wells 28 is a marker is down, and you may have seen the infraction right on your television screen at home. It is an offside against the Green Bay Packers. So that advances the ball to the 46. So now it'll be a second down and five for the New York Giants. No scores. Root goes to the far side. Schottner up in the line, split away to the near side. Walton is the tight end. Second and five from their own 46. A loose ball. Webster recovered, uh, it appeared, his own fumble. 79 in white, Roosevelt Brown, 83 Quinlan. 71 Forrester, who was there alertly on the play. And the fumble allowed the Giants to pick up two yards up to the 48. It'll be a third down and three for New York. Both teams thus far are playing cautious, steady football, sticking mostly to the ground. Tittle has attempted one forward pass. Wrote now to the far side. Tittle of LSU, number 14. Third and three from his own 48. There's the pass. Road has it. Road is in Green Bay territory as Henry Griminger, number 46 of Baylor, made the tackle, and the Giants have their second first down of the ball game. With seven minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter, there is no score here at City Stadium in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The ball has been spotted by the referee at about the Green Bay, 46 and one half. The Giants started this drive at their own 30. Schaffner now coming to the near side, wrote to the opposite side once more, and Tittle uh, wants some aerial yardage. Down here is Schaffner, who lost his footing, and the pass was underthrown. Whittington and Wood cover number 85, Dell Schaffner. One of the trades that uh, Wellington Mayor of the New York Giants made this year that has helped New York to the Eastern Conference crown, the number three pass catch in the league, who caught 68 going into this ball game, including. 11 touchdowns. So it'll be now a second down and 10 for New York from the Green Bay 46. No score. Rote and Walton to the far side. Again, Schaffner, the usual pattern to the near side, split away about 10 yards. Wells up close on the setback as Webster carries. There you saw the hard charge of the defensive team of Green Bay leveling uh, the Giants would be blockers Witeka and Schaffner Jordan and Bettis credited for stopping no gain by the Giants so it'll be a third down and ten coming up in thus far a great defensive battle 71 Forrester the outside linebacker 83 Quinlan 74 Jordan 79 Hanner 87 Davis and 58 is Dan Curry here are the Giants third and ten from the Green Bay 46 Long pass. Kyle Rote is there. Looking back into the sun, which is a little on the hazy side today. Kyle had run a beautiful pass pattern and couldn't hold on to the ball. Rote, the All-American from SNU and co-captain of the New York Giants. And for New York now, it is a fourth down and ten. And Don Chandler has come into the ball game for New York as Willie Wood and Lou Carpenter go back in twin safety. Chandler has been known to uh, not kick the ball and run with it. The line of scrimmage is the Green Bay 46 yard line. Chandler is back at about his own 43 to kick. It's high. Luke Carpenter watches the ball going into the end zone. It'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the Green Bay 20 yard line. that offense and see again if we can determine what the extent of Jim Taylor's injury is. It was interesting in the first series they ran Horning three times and didn't use Taylor even on the third and two. So now the Packers have it once again and let's see what they choose to do this time. Okay, Lindsey Nelson, here are the Packers on the left in the dark jersey. Bart Starr, Taylor and Horning with setbacks. Dowler, McGee, and Kramer, potential receivers. As we look at star number 15 from his own 20-yard line, no score in the game. And again, it is Paul Horning that carries the ball. Dick Moduleski, number 77, and Greer get on the play for New York. And Horning just turns out the yardage as he has advanced the ball up to his own 24, a 
four-yard gain in second down and six. Up front for the Packers. From top to bottom, the Duransky and Thurston. Jim Ringo at center. Forrest Gregg and Norm Masters. The guard and tackle on the near side with Ron Kramer, the tight end. McGee, the split end, and Dollar, the flanker back. McGee to the far side, Dollar to the near side. The tight end, Kramer, number 88. On a second down and six from their own 24. Nice faking by Starr. A deep pass pattern by McGee. Dick Lynch, number 22 of Notre Dame, was covering on the play. And again, uh, it could have been that sunshine that's coming in from right to left as McGee was halfway looking into it and awaiting Bart Starr's long pass. McGee, the Packers, number one pass receiver this year, catching 51 and scoring seven touchdowns. So Starr now is faced with a third down and six from his own 24. Lynch, who covered on the play, is uh, the most recent bridegroom, having been married Thursday night in Pennsylvania. Up looking on, number 70, third and six for Starr, number 15. To Paul Hunter. And Green Bay has its initial first down of the ball game, and you can see why Paul Hornet was named the player of the year just about everywhere. There's time out on the field with the score. Green Bay nothing and New York nothing. Well, Curly, first off, they haven't been using Jim Taylor on the Green Bay uh, half line. What do you think? Well, it's pretty hard, Hal, to determine right now how serious that injury is. However, I think the fact that he's in there means that he can play some football or they wouldn't take a chance with him. And I think after he gets warmed up a little bit, loosened up, we'll see Jim Taylor carrying the football. And the big play of the game, the first one was uh, to the we Green Bay. We just saw it. <laughs> we just saw the first really big play. And now it takes a little while. These fellows have to establish themselves and the... Uh, uh, feel each other out a little bit because this is the last game of the season and they don't want to make that big mistake. So we'll see them begin to open up gradually. Looks too like it's a little hard to hold on to that ball when it passes. Well, it's true because of the extremely cold temperature. The fingers are a little stiff, but the biggest thing I think the factor here is the sun. You see with so much snow as a reflection around there and it's probably a blue sky day in Green Bay. We'll have to wait till that sun settles down. If you're looking into it, it's, it's a hard glare and it's hard to keep your eyes on it. All right, let's go back to Green Bay. The World Championship of Football in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Chris Schenkel and Lindsey Nelson as we're in the first period. Four minutes and 47 seconds left. Paul Harding and Bart Starr combining on a 26-yard pass play, picking up the Packers' initial first down. Green Bay is at midfield. With the first down, and Starr sends McGee to the far side. McGee is actually in the backfield as Dowler comes up on the line, split to the near side. Taylor, 31. But the give is the Horning. And Horning, the workhorse, is tackled by Roosevelt Dreer on the play. Paul Horning, everybody's All-America and Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame, was everybody's choice for Player of the Year in the National Football League having led the NFL in scoring for the third straight year, 146 points. Now with his fine pass catching and running, he has advanced the Packers to the New York Giants, 45-yard line with a second and five. There is Starr, Dowler to the near side. And Taylor carries. Cliff Livingston, number 89, in on the tackle as Jim Taylor, who is being used sparingly here in the first quarter, has advanced to the Giant 41. And for Green Bay, it's a third down and one coming up. Third and one, as the Packers have reached the deepest penetration at the Giant 41 and a half. There you see Ron Kramer, number 88, who plays the tight blocking end as the Giant defensive unit, basically a 4-3 defense. Dowler to the near side, McGee to the opposite side. The ends are in close. On a third down and one, who will carry? And Jim Taylor does the job for the Packers, and it's a first down as Erich Barnes makes the stop. Taylor on the key pass play that helped get the Packers to midfield. 
was used as a decoy was not blocking for the passer Bart Starr. For Green Bay now, with a first and ten at the New York Giants, 37, no score. A little less than three minutes remaining in the first quarter. Star of Alabama. And that powerful running attack of Green Bay has put the Packers inside the Giants 35 at about the 32. Huff and Greer tackling Jim Taylor on the play. They have moved down now to the Giants 32. It is second down and five. As the sun really comes from behind those hazy clouds here in Wisconsin. 20 degree temperatures. Now it's Kramer and McGee to the far side and Dowler is all alone to the near side. At the Giant 32, Bart Starr has a second down and five. Ladies and gentlemen, that blocking up front by Thurston and Skaransky is a thing to behold. And they are riddling the giant defensive unit with the running attack cross-bucking now to the giant 25. And of course, it's enough for the first down. Paul Horning, starring here in the first quarter with a minute and 40 seconds to go in the quarter. No score. Mark Starr keeps both ends in post to the tackle. It's Dowler flanked to the near side. First and 10 from the Giants, 25. Jim Taylor. And there the blocking was done by Norm Masters, number 78, and Ron Kramer, number 88, as Huff makes the tackle on 31. Taylor. Taylor picks up five yards on the play to the Giant 20, where it is now second down and five for Green Bay, starting this march on their own 20. Sticking to the ground, except on a 26-yard pass play to Horning, which brought them to midfield. As we look at Huff, 70, 77, Dick Modulewski of Maryland. There's Big Roosevelt Greer, number 76. We have 50 seconds left in the first quarter now. No score. Green Bay with a second down and five at the giant 20. Two men going deep. first down on pass catching interference uh, Boyd Dowler the intended receiver and Erich Barnes was a little aggressive in trying to knock down the pass and with 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter here at Green Bay it is a first and goal to go for Green Bay at the New York Giants seven yard line no score all right Bart Starr now asks for silence for the partisan crowd as the ends are in close down to the near side. On his tail is set back. That is Jim Taylor of LSU. Randon has averaged over five yards a carry this year with Lynch 22. In on the play for New York, along with number 70, Sam Hoffman Scott 82. There was very little advance on the play, so it'll be second down and goal in the vicinity of the Giants' seven-yard line, and we have less than 10 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Green Bay Packers moving into the wind now. First quarter just about over. The gun has sounded. That's the end of the first quarter, and the score is Green Bay nothing and New York nothing. As you like it, yes, to read. As you like it, so do we. The happiest sound your friends agree is Mabel. Just about everybody far and near. Takes the friendly call you hear. The most refreshing note of cheer is Mabel. How the good word gets around, now most everyone has found. It's the most inviting sound of all. Mabel, 
as you like it. Yes, the reason the best of all good friends agree as they whistle cheerfully. Mabel, Carly, Black Label Beer. You're looking at a stadium built for football only. In the cradle city of the National Football League, Green Bay, as the Green Bay Packers on the right, now moving from right to left, we await the start of the second quarter. No score in the ball game. The Packers have a second down and goal to go from the New York Giants, seven. This drive starting on the 20, using up 11 plays to get to this point. Primarily a running game, which we all expected, and the Packers have the best as we look at five horning 21 Taylor. Dollar and McGee are set apart on a second and goal from the seven. Cross back and ball running. In one of the prettiest power marches, Featuring a sound running game, the Green Bay Packers have just gone 80 yards in 12 plays to take the lead six to nothing. And Horning now will try for the point after with Bart Starr holding. And you saw that it was good. So it's a seven to nothing ball game with 14 minutes and 56 seconds left in the first half here at City Stadium in Green Bay. Well, Chris, when these two teams met in Milwaukee earlier this year during the regular season and the Green Bay Packers won by a score of 20 to 17, it was their ground game primarily that moved them in there and the New York Giant defense had been determined to stop that ground game this afternoon. They didn't stop it in that particular effort because the Packers took over after the touchback on their own 20 and as you've said, they drove 80 yards with Paul Harning taking it in from the seven on the first play of the second quarter as they go out in front. Just to keep the record straight, both teams started today entirely wearing pleated shoes. No sneakers on the field at the start of today's ball game. The sun came out just at kickoff time, breaking through the clouds. Temperature 20 degrees at kickoff here at Green Bay, Wisconsin. So right now, we're going to have the Packers kicking off and the Giants receiving to see if they can move the ball. And once again, here's Chris Schenkel. Okay, Lindsey Nelson, Ben Agajanian, number three. That is uh, Dan Curry alongside Agajanian. Waiting now for the official to tell him that uh, tee up the ball on his own 40-yard line, back deep for the New York Giants. We have Joel Wells and Bobby Gator. They are the deep men. And Ben Agatanian has the wind to his back. And the Packers have a 7 to nothing lead with only four seconds having elapsed in the second quarter. Here's the kick. It's short. It's Wells at the 17. Up to the 20. Flipping at the 25-yard line. Elijah Pitts, number 22, is scrambling back, thinking the ball might have been loose. And Nelson Buren was in on the play for the Packers. So the New York Giants now have the ball for the third time in the ball game. First and 10 from there, let's call it the 25, it's just across the 25, as Wells and Webster, 28 and 29 of the setback. Schaffner to the far side, Roach to the near side. Tittle is the quarterback. The fake to Webster, the pass to Roach. The pinpoint accuracy on that play was not there as Bill Forrester, Rush Tittle, and Henry Griminger covered the potential receiver Kyle Roach. So it'll be a second down and 10 for the Giants from their own 25. They were able to sustain one attack, moving from their own 30 to the Green Bay 46, and then were forced to punt. Tough Packers as the draw play goes to Alec Webster, who is across the 30-yard line. Dave Hanner, 79 in on the play, along with a deep man from Southern California, Willie Wood. Alec Webster, for 29. Number three rusher in the NFL comes back to the huddle. Is Y. Tittle now. All signals. The Giants have advanced the ball to the 30, and it's a third down and five with Green Bay leading. 7 to nothing. 13 minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the first half. 66 for Green Bay is Nitsky in at linebacker now. As Fiddle goes back to throw. It is deflected and intercepted. And 
you see number 66, and to show you how big and fast the linebackers are in the National Football League, you will recall, he was right up head on the offensive center, but when the pass was drawn and deflected, he was back 15 yards to intercept. There's a big break now for the Green Bay Packers as Henry Jordan tipped that forward pass drawn by Tittle. And now for the Packers, they have the ball on the New York Giants, 34 with a first and 10 after that interception by Ray Nitschke, one of the three Army men playing out here today. Bart Starr and Horning on the option. Look out. Max McGee is out there. He was covered on the play by Dick Lynch, number 22. Incomplete. Second down and 10 as Max McGee, number 85, comes back to the Green Bay Packer Huddle. He's from Tulane University. Captain of the South team of the 56 Senior Bowl. Now lives in Fort Worth, Texas from Sexton City, Nevada. Second down and 10 now. Green Bay with a seven to nothing lead and 13 minutes left in the first half. Have the ball at the New York Giants, 34 with Dowler. Flanked to the far side. There you see Ringo, 51. Here is Starr throwing long. McGee again. McGee had gotten free from the man that covered him, Jim Patton of Mississippi. But the pass was a little long, and it'll be a third down and ten, as Bart Starr has been mixing up his plays, driving 80 yards in 12 plays to score, and now has come back after an interception by Ray Nitsky of a tittle pass, going to the air, and trying to get there for six more. The Giants, 81, Andy Robustelli, 82, Tom Scott of Virginia. 76 is Greer, 70, Huff, 77, Modulevsky, 75, Cat Cavage, 89, Cliff Livingston. Off to the far side now is Dollars, third and ten for the Packers from the Giants, 34, McGee to the near side. Bart Starr, a quick pass, look in to Ron Kramer. And it's the three Giants, Patton, Huff, and Morris, to bring Kramer down, the big man from Michigan, 6'3", 230 pounds, number 88 in the dark jersey. There he is, back in the huddle. Dollar 86. And the Packers now are inside the Giant 20. Let's call it the Giant 18 after that 16-yard play, and it's a first down for Green Bay. Their fifth first down of the ball game, a star called signal. 12 minutes left in the first half. Green Bay 7, New York nothing. Jim Taylor. And they battle for that ball. Taylor and Jim Cat Cavage mixing it up a little bit. Modulevsky at the bottom of that pileup, the left tackle for the New York Giants. And the carry advances the ball one yard to the Giants 17, where it'll now be second down and nine for Green Bay. Star of Montgomery, Alabama, 6'1, 200 pounds. From our end zone camera, this is Star 15. There is Huff number 70, head on. Jim Ringo, the offensive center on a second and nine from the Giants 17. Jim Taylor getting inside the New York 15 with Greer, Scott, and Robustelli making the play for New York. Taylor uh, corseted it up today to protect that back on the right side. As just brought the Packers inside the Giants 15. Let's call it the 13 for a four-yard gain. It is third down and five with 11 minutes remaining in the first half. The Packers lead seven to nothing. Horning scoring on a seven-yard slant. Dowler, 86 to the far side. McGee to the near side. Kramer is put away. Third and five, a pass play, and it's... Touchdown, Green Bay! Bart Starr threading the needle to Boyd Dowler of Colorado, number 86. And the Packers have taken a 13 to nothing lead with a little less than 11 minutes remaining in the first half, and Horning can make it 14 with Starr holding. 
A kick is up. Good. And climb out on the field with the score. Green Bay 14 and New York nothing. Formula Junior. Newest in one of the most exciting forms of automobile racing. Flashing around a track at breathtaking speed in one of these specially built single seaters is a thrill a minute. A thrill that takes skill, experience, nerve. Why does a man go for a sport like this? Only one reason. Because it sets the pace in pleasure. There's no question about it. If you're looking for something that sets the pace in pleasure, here it is. Covering that kick as it's Wells at the 10, moving to the 15, now the 20, then the 25, up to the 30. A good return up to about the 33 yard line as Nitsky 66 and Lou Carpenter in on the play. Chris, uh, we might mention right here that the Green Bay Packers can thank the United States Army for their cooperation in that last touchdown because the interception was made by Nitsky. The touchdown was scored by Dowler, both on leave from Fort Lewis, Washington. And Lindsey Nelson, their first touchdown, scored by Paul Horning on leave from Fort Riley, Kansas. Here are the New York Giants now with Tittle at the controls, first and ten from their own 33. The Giants trailing by 14 points as Tittle is being rushed by Davis. Throw. Joel Wells, the intended receiver, but Willie Davis has gotten into the Giants secondary and had really lowered the boom on Tittle. If you look at Stroud, 66, Larson, 53, 80, Walton, 28, Wells, 55, Ray Witeka, and 79, Roosevelt Brown. So, the Giants, who have been able, unable to get things going beyond the Green Bay 46, now have a second down and 10 at about their own 33. Green Bay 14, New York nothing. 10 minutes left in the first half. This is Tittle now. Audi Schaffner. Was intended for Joe Walton coming down the middle. Incomplete. Why a tittle who helped immensely in the Giants' drive to the Eastern Conference crown? Unofficially now, has tried nine passes, completing only two, which is far below his 57% completion average in the 61 season. 14 to nothing. Green Bay leading. Willie Davis. There you see Nitsky, 66, as the New York Giants now have the ball. Second down and 10 from their own, 33. Tittle is back, throwing to Kyle Rowe. It's intercepted by Grillinger. Henry Grillinger intercepts for the Green Bay Packers. And in less than two minutes, the Packers have intercepted the Giants twice. A pass intended for Kyle Road as Grimminger, 46, comes to the sideline. The Packers score the last time they intercept, going 34 yards in six plays. Start at hour. They lead 14 to nothing. With nine and a half minutes remaining in the first half, here are the Packers first and ten at about the New York Giants, 36. Dollar to the far side. And those wonderful moves of Jimmy Taylor at the last moment when making contact, contact with a would-be tackler just spins away and gets more yardage. Lynch and Scott made the tackle. Taylor goes to the New York Giants 32 for a four-yard gain. Second down and six. Nine minutes left in the first half. Green Bay 14, New York nothing. 
The tackles, Masters and Stolensky, 78 and 76. As we have Dowler to the far side, McGee to the near side now. The ball at the Giant, 32. And holding. Inside the Giant 30 is Sam Huff. Makes the tackle along with Roosevelt Greer. Harding moving the Packers to the Giants 27. So it'll be third down and one yard. Third and one. In their last drive on a third and ten play, it was a star that made 16 yards on a pass play to get them deeper and eventually the touchdown as Dowler goes to the far side, third and one from the Giants 27. And Taylor drives the first down on the ground. Let's see if he made it. Up and Morrison in on the play. Forrest Gregg, number 75 of SMU, blocking on that play. Let's see uh, where George Rennick has spotted the ball. As, as again, John Heiberger comes in to measure. Ball is just shy of the 25-yard line, and here's the measurement, and Green Bay has a first down. Green Bay mixing up their attack, going more to the pass than usual, but still sticking with a basic, determined ground game, have a 14-0 lead over the New York Giants with 7 minutes, 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Horning and Taylor have been the setbacks all the way here in the first half. Dollar the flanker back, Kramer and McGee the end. Jim Ringo, Syracuse the offensive center. First and ten now, Green Bay from the Giants, 25. The pitch to Taylor. And Fred Thurston blocking beautifully again for Taylor. And Masters in on the play, blocking two. As Taylor now is at about the New York Giant 21 as Lynch forced him out. It'll be a second down and six for the Green Bay Packers. We talked about Fred Thurston. As an all-pro selection, received more votes than any offensive man in the uh, National Football League. He's from Valparaiso. 6'1", 255, and plays the near side guard position. Second and six now for Green Bay from about the New York Giant 21. The delay to Horning. And you can see just how tough it is to bring him down. This was Forrest Gregg who blocked on that running play. And Horning is down near the giant 16-yard line. And Modulesky and Hop. Vince Lombardi, the head coach in his third year at Green Bay, was greatly worried that Horning, number five, would not have his usual timing for today's championship game. But he certainly will always have that determination that has made him the All-American and All-Pro that he is. Paul Horning, who scored the first touchdown, climaxing an 80-yard drive, is at the halfback spot on the right side now as the Green Bay Packers have a third down and two at the New York Giants, 17. This is Horning again. And Horning is to the 15 and maybe enough for the first down. 82, Scott, Morrison, 40. Blocking on that play, the left guard, Thurston. First down, Green Bay. Packers getting their seventh first down. The Giants unofficially have only two thus far in the first half with six minutes to go. And Green Bay leads 14 to nothing. Now, with a first and 10 from the New York Giants, 15. Starting the drive at the Giant 36 after an interception by Henry Griminger. Mark Starr, number 15, sends 86 Dollar to the far side and McGee as the flanker back to the near side with Horning up close. It is Taylor that carries. Robustelli and Scott, the linebacker and defensive end on the near side for the Giants and Greer, the right tackle, in on the play. But Taylor is to the 14-yard line, a pickup of one. It'll be second down and nine. Five minutes, 20 seconds left in the first half. Packers scoring. Horning driving seven yards. With his point after, 
The Packers have came back after a Nitschke interception to go 34 yards in six plays. Star to Dowler, 13 yards. And now the Packers with a second down and nine are at the Giants, 14. There's a pass to Ron Kramer. Packers scored that third touchdown. Somebody in here in the studio said uh, maybe instead of trying to finish it, the Giants should negotiate a truce. <laughs> no, it's not over with yet. Uh, the Packers have gotten a jump, but uh, it'll still be a good ball game before we're finished. The anyhow. Packers have had the ball all afternoon. Well, I think that's the uh, that's the key. As I mentioned before, the outset of today's game, ball control is the most important thing in a game like this, and I sort of figured that Green Bay would be able to do it, and I think they proved it the second march that they made uh, climaxing the score at the beginning of the second quarter where they went 80 yards in 12 plays hal and that's been the story to date they've been able to keep the ball of course those couple of interceptions didn't hurt either that's right all right let's go back and have another look at it city stadium in green bay wisconsin the first half of today's world of sport featuring the greatest show in football is presented for your enjoyment by the carling breweries limited brewers of carling black label beer The World Championship of Football in Green Bay as the Packers have a 21 to nothing lead over the New York Giants with about five minutes to go in the first half. Agajani will kick through either Wells or Gators of New York. It's low and to the near side with Wells at the 15, the 20, the 25, take up the 30, the 35, and down at about the 39-yard line on a nifty return as Nitschke, 66, was in on the tackle for the Green Bay Packers. The Packers proving that against the great teams of the NFL, you cannot commit errors or make mistakes because the Packers have gone ahead after intercepting two passes to score two touchdowns. And now, at quarterback, it's the 14-year veteran from Mississippi, Charlie Connerly, for New York, with a first and 10 at about his own 39-yard line. Connerly, back to throw, being pressured. The pass is deflected. Dave Hanner, Number 79 was the man that was in on Connerly, and that is the second time that a giant quarterback's forward has been deflected by a big, big lineman. There is Connerly, who came into this ball game, having drawn a total of 173 touchdown passes in his career, who now has a second down and 10 with the ball at his own 39. 21 to nothing, the Green Bay Packers. Favorites in the ball game, leading by four minutes and 22 seconds to go. The score 21 to nothing is Connerly on the draw to Webster. Blocking Ray Witeka, number 55 and 79 in white. Roosevelt Brown is Quinlan, 83. And Willie Wood in on the tackle for the Green Bay Packers. High top sneakers. He's the only man on the field now wearing sneakers. High white sneakers. And he's Lindsey Nelson, he was the man that wore those sneakers in the title game in 1956 on an icy field against the Chicago Bears. Connerly, who in three games this year came off the bench to spark the Giants, now has a third down and about three from the 45-yard line. Third and three. The blocking is good. The pass is long to Walton. Walton is out there, but there was a near interception by Willie Wood, number 24. Let's see if a marker was down on the play at the line of scrimmage. Joe Walton, who this year has not been used as a long receiver, has a penalty now offside against the Green Bay Packers, and that's uh, all the Giants needed. They got a first down by penalty with the ball now at midfield. Phil King is now in the New York Giant lineup as Alex Webster limps to the far sideline. 
King of Vanderbilt in his fourth year. Number 24 in the backfield with King will be number 28, Joel Wells, who started the ball game. Schaffner to the far side, wrote, is somewhat of a tight end, 44. You see him there on the near side. Nice faking by Connerly. A swing pass to Joel Wells, incomplete. A Packer defensive unit, you see Forrester, 71, and Wells, 28, really pressuring the offensive lineman and the quarterback and keeping them off balance. Playing havoc with the timing that they need. Sort of being the spear points of any offensive attack. Three minutes and 20 seconds left in the first half. And if you just joined us, you might be amazed that the Green Bay Packers have a 21 to nothing lead over the New York Giants. Big halftime show, including some twisting in the cold in Wisconsin. Now it's Walton comes to the far side and wrote is a Slot back as Connolly wants to throw. Out there is Kyle Rote. Kyle hands the ball, and the Giants have a first down at the Green Bay Packer 15. John Simak covering on the play as Kyle Rote makes a fine catch from Charlie Connolly, and the Giants have their deepest penetration at the Green Bay 15. Their offensive formation uh, that time was different than anything they'd used this year with Rote as a slot back, Walton a near side split end. There's timeout on the field with the score Green Bay 21 and New York nothing. Here's a pace setting sport for pace setting men, a special kind of racing in a boat that's built to take it. Streaking across the water, then suddenly hurtling through the air, makes this kind of speedboat racing a sport that sets the pace in pleasure. There's no doubt about it. If you're looking for something that sets the pace in pleasure, here it is. Football League World Championship game in Green Bay, Wisconsin, with two minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. Green Bay 21, New York nothing. The Giants on a 35-yard pass play now have a first and 10 on the Green Bay. 15, Wells and King of the setbacks. Road is again in the slot. The give is to King. King powers inside the Green Bay 10 as Nitschke, 66, Quinlan, 83, Quinlan of Michigan State. And on the tackle is Roosevelt Brown, blocked beautifully for number 24 in white, Phil King, former captain of Vanderbilt. Giants now have advanced the ball to the Green Bay 8. Seven-yard gain at second down and three for New York. Two minutes, 15 seconds, with the clock running to go in the first half is Webster. 29 is back in a fullback, replacing King. Schaffner to the far side. Dalton Walton are tight. Webster. Hit high by Nitschke, number 66 of Illinois, and 58, Dan Curry. Webster gets to the six. It'll be a third down coming up. Third down and maybe a little less than two yards, about a yard and a half. There you see the Packers, 87, Davis. Up front for the Packers, Quinlan, Jordan, Hanner, Davis. Linebackers, Forrester, Nitschke, and Curry. Dreminger, Simank, Wood, and Whittington have been powerfully effective here in the first half. Shutting out thus far the New York Giants with two minutes to go in the first half. Green Bay scoring three touchdowns, one by Hornan, one by Dowler, and one by Ron Kramer. The Giants now have a third down, a little more than a yard, from the Green Bay six-yard line. Wells and Webster the setback. Rote is a flanker back to the near side. 
down coming up. Norwell. Hit by Davis, 87, 83, Quinlan, 58, Curry. The Green Bay Packers, who won the Western Conference after 12 games of a 14-game schedule, are right at their peak. No gain on the play. It is fourth down as Bobby Gators, number 35, is in at halfback. He is the rookie from New Mexico State. He's the boy that runs fast. He can also throw the option pass. Road to the near side on a fourth down and one. The Giants going for it. They give us to Gators. Gators, they want to throw to Kyle Rhodes. Kyle Rhodes was wide open, but the pass was high. And Bobby Gators, who threw only three passes this year, completing three for two touchdowns, is incomplete. And the Green Bay Packers take over on down. First and 10. About a minute and 15 seconds remaining as the ball comes out to the Green Bay 20. We have Horning in the backfield. And now number 25 is in. Tom Moore replacing Jim Taylor. And Moore is somewhat of a slot back as Horning carries. The blocking is tremendous. And Horning runs to his own 37. Jim Patton. Makes the tackle for New York, number 20, along with Barnes, 49. There is Horning. And he has just picked up more running yardage as the Giant is injured on the play here in Green Bay. One minute to go here in the first half with Green Bay holding a 21 to nothing margin over the New York Giants. Or Green Bay after that advance, which has carried them up to about their own 37, a 17-yard advance. They will, when play is resumed, have another first and ten as Patton was shaken up on the play. Mark Starr calling a tremendously effective game as he's running primarily, has tried only eight passes, completing four, two for touchdowns, and delighting this capacity crowd that you see, the Packer fans, Packer backers, while the New York Giants go to the air 15 times unofficially, have completed only three passes and picking up three first downs compared to the Packers' eight. 21 to nothing, as you see the field uh, has gotten uh, the greatest care, gentle care, of any field, I'm sure, in football in America, and uh, just being perfect for the world's championship of football. I mentioned earlier that the field lights had been turned on, which is a league rule, just as uh, our ruling is that should the game be tied at the end of regulation play, there'll be a sudden death. But that we'll need those lights because it's uh, primarily uh, clear sky, the sun peeking from behind some of the fleecy uh, white clouds here as the Packer fans dressed very warmly. The parking lots cleared of lots and lots of snow as the city officials in this Bay City must be congratulated for the great work they have done. Patton now is helped off the field by Johnny Johnston and Johnny Ziegel, along with Sid Moret, the trainers of the New York Giants, and he will be replaced in the secondary by Alan Webb, a rookie from Arnold College. Patton, the man that pulled more votes for all pro selection than any defensive man in the NFL, is on the sideline. Here are the Packers first and 10 from their own 37. Bart Starr, the quarterback. And Horning again. It's practically unanimous in getting the calls out here today. Tom Scott making the tackle, but not before Horning had crossed his own 40-yard line and advanced to the 44 for a seven-yard gain. It is second down and three. In the first meeting between, or the second meeting between these two clubs in 1961 in Milwaukee, it was Jim Taylor who turned out 186 yards, helped immensely by the blocking of Paul Horning. Now today with Taylor uh, hampered by a back injury, a kidney injury, it is Paul Horning that is carrying the, uh, the brunt of the battle for the Green Bay Packers, who last year won the Western Conference crown and then were defeated by the Philadelphia Eagles for the world title. With the ball now on the 44, the Green Bay Packers in the dark jerseys have a second down and three. 50 seconds unofficially left in the first half of play. Dowler to the far side and McGee to the near side. Star on the long count. Gives to Tom Moore, number 25 of Vanderbilt. And Moore was held up high by number 75, 
Jim Cat Cavage of Dayton in his sixth year, along with Dick Modulesky as we look at Hawk 70 in white, and Tom Moore gets the necessary yardage for a Green Bay Packer first down. So for Green Bay, with 27 seconds left in the first half, they have a first down at their own 47, and they have a 21 to nothing lead. Ken Iman of Southeast Missouri in St. Louis comes into the ball game. Now he uh, is waved off the field, coming to the near sideline. There you see uh, Iman, two-year man. The Packer offensive team up front have the great blockers, the great size. This includes Norm Masters at 250. There you see Moore, 25, star 15. A little taping going on in the left hand of Moore. Moore is a definite threat and uh, much to the worry of the opposing coaches throughout the year was the Packer number one draft choice in 1960 and as a rookie led the National Football League in kickoff returns. You know he has speed, he hails from Madison, Tennessee and he is trying to fill the big shoes of Jim Taylor who's on the sideline right now. It is Moore and Horning the setbacks the Packers with a first and ten from their own 47, about 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Starr getting plenty of time completes the run Kramer. A powerful run. And look at him line up quickly now with the ball of the New York Giants. 15-yard line, Starr throws out in the flat. Let's see what George Rennick's the referee now, talking to Andy Robustelli as the Packers send in uh, what appears to be their kicking team with only two seconds on the clock unofficially, but a marker is down on the field, and Rennick's number 52 is stepping off yardage against New York. Offside on that quick count play, and Paul Horning now can up the count by three points as he will try a field goal from 17 yards away, and on the clock it says only two seconds left in the first half. Bart Starr will hold an angle from the far side to the near side. Here's the kick. It is up. Good. co-captain Andy Robustelli of the New York Giants talking with the referee George Rennix. The gun has sounded here at Green Bay City Stadium. That's the end of the first half with the score Green Bay 24 and New York nothing. In just a moment, we'll pause for station identification, after which Curly Morrison and I will return with some highlights. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. Well, Curly Morrison, all I can say is it's hard to believe. I can understand the Green Bay Packers being on top, but it's hard to believe they could be in front 24 to nothing, particularly when you uh, understand that Jim Taylor is uh, limping and, uh, frankly, no use out there today. How I agree with you, even sitting here watching this game, it's hard to believe that the score is 24 to nothing because here are two really fine football teams. Uh, the only thing that I can say is that Green Bay is just doing the job a little more thoroughly, and they're really they're really handling the defensive line uh, for the most part of the Giants, which is certainly 
a terrific task in itself. Well, anything you wanted to say about Green Bay would be true, and just about anything against the Giants would <laughs> be true at this point. The, uh, the Green Bay timing is perfect, and I notice on all those pass plays, the Giants, uh, the ball just seems to be a foot out of reach or a foot low or a foot high. Everything's off. Well, they're getting a terrific rush by the Green Bay uh, defensive line, and one of the things that I think is really keynoting this game is the fact that Paul Horning, for the first time in five or six weeks, and Ray Nitschke and Boyd Dollar have been with the Packers to work the last six days. They've, uh, Horning, you can certainly tell uh, from games we saw previously where he was gone during the week in the service, he's had this whole week to brush up on his timing and execution of plays, and it certainly uh, stood out here in this first half. Of course, I imagine a couple of interceptions like uh, Green Bay pulled off against <laughs> the Giants. Uh, just as they uh, tried to get something rolling, this must take the heart out of a football club. Well, it does, and the amazing thing about that interception of Ray Nitschke, which set up a score for Green Bay, was the fact that as the play started, he was head on uh, the offensive center of the Giants, and yet seconds, uh, almost an instant, he was back 15 yards to pick off that pass, and that shows you how quick these big defensive linemen and linebackers can react to a situation. Well, uh, Curly, I know that uh, Coach Ali Sherman of the Giants is a pretty good talker, but uh, what does he say at halftime now, trailing 24 to nothing? Well, the only thing he can say now is, suppose we spent this whole season preparing for this game, and let's let's start executing a little bit. Well, Curly, I know you've got some uh, film shots here you want to explain to us. Uh, the first one, I believe, uh, shows the great work of Paul Hornung, who is the uh, outstanding his, offense. His the... run for a touchdown, it also shows the outstanding work of Kramer and Masters, uh, in their offensive line, uh, carving away and a fine job of blocking by Jim Taylor. Let's take a look at the first here on the chart. This is the first touchdown of Green Bay. This is number five, Paul Horning right here. And this is Jim Taylor, the offensive fullback. And they're in a split position down here in the goal line. We've got the Giants' goal line defense really stacked in here. And the key block was done by Norm Masters, this offensive tackle, and Ron Kramer, number 88, the offensive end. When we look at it on video tape, you'll see the fine job that these two fellows do on Calf Cabbage, taking him down the line. The rest of these men are all checking back. That's automatic. Here, Jim Taylor takes Livingston, 89, the linebacker, out. And he really does a nice job, and you'll see it. Out here, Boyd Dowler does a fine job in keeping Eric Barnes and the safety man back from coming up to make a quick tackle. He goes down uh, as if he's an intended receiver and starts them back, and then, of course, he cuts in in order to screen either one of them off, but that was never necessary because of the time he had started them back, Horning was in the end zone. Let's take a look at it on videotape, and I think you'll see what I mean about the nice job that Kramer and Taylor and company do in blocking here for Paul Horning. At the top of the screen to the right, you see number 88 and then number 76 on Green Bay, Norm Masters, the offensive end and tackle. Now watch them take Cat Cabbage down the line, and watch Taylor right there knock Livingston back. And there you see the score. And that's typical of the type doing up front. And, of course, Paul Horning and Jim Taylor do for each other in, in their running game. And that, that's, the, uh, that's the secret. Yeah, we've seen this happen, uh, frankly, all year long where uh, Horning uh, has been used as a blocker for Taylor. But this is one of the few times where it's uh, been a reverse picture, isn't it? That's right. And it's certainly evident that Jim Taylor is not up to his usual running form. So... Uh, the uh, Packers have had to reverse uh, the situation a little bit, and fortunately they got two good fellows back there that can do that kind of job and help one another out. You can tell he's not up to form because uh, Taylor carried the ball once there in the second quarter, and Jimmy Patton came in on him over on the sidelines, and he knocked him just about eight feet right across the sideline. Now, ordinarily, Taylor would have flattened. Well, flattened. that's right. You can tell that Jim Taylor is pretty well bound and taped up, and they're doing that, of course, to protect those kidneys. They've probably got a lot of sponge rubber around this rib cage area to protect the kidneys, and he's pretty well taped in, and that's the reason his, he's limited in motion to some extent. Now, later on in the quarter, we had a couple of pass plays, and uh, one thing I want to point out, uh, they were in around the 40-yard line and then in around the 20-yard line, and we were wondering whether they would have to kick the field goal, and you were pointing out that they'll try to keep the ball in the center here, and they were working pass plays. That's right. There was a third and ten situation for Green Bay just before... Uh, uh, their second uh, touchdown, they were about the 34 or 35 yard line of New York, Hal. And I did make a comment that in this particular instance, they're going to have to stay in position for a field goal in the event they can't pick up the first down. And what they really did, they threw just a quick little look in pass to Ron Kramer so that he would take the ball right over the middle. And he probably had instructions, I'm sure, on this one. If you catch the ball, 
Don't keep on going across the field for the sidelines. Turn and go straight up the middle and try to stay in the middle of the goal post because if we don't make first down and have to uh, uh, kick a field goal, we want to be in a good position for an angle. And I'll show you here on the diagram what I mean by that, Hal, and we can look uh, on videotape in a moment. Here was the offensive formation with Harning and Taylor going this way. In other words, holding Huff and these fellows right here, uh, making them play the play. For example, the good little uh, quick toss that they run off into Taylor with Horning leading has been a very effective play all season. So Huff is keying on Taylor, and he starts this way. Now Kramer, really all he does is take a step across the line of scrimmage and look in, and there's no delay or dropping back to pass this one. Starr takes the ball. He doesn't even make any fake at all. He just raises up and throws quickly. And, of course, Dowler out here once again keeps Livingston and this halfback and the safety man, they have to keep their eyes on him because of his ability uh, downfield. And all it is is just one step back by the quarterback, and he fires the quick look into Kramer. And let's take a look at it because he does a beautiful job of keeping the ball in the middle of the field in the event that he doesn't make uh, the complete 10 yards for a first down. Here we see the good close uh, look at Andy Robustelli and Tom Scott there of the New York Giants. There's Rosie Greer, all... 290 pounds, Dick Mojaleski and uh, Kat Cavage and Cliff Livingston. Now Kramer is the end at the top of your screen, number 88. Here's Horning and Taylor deep back. They start this way. He steps back and just a quick look into Kramer. And you'll notice he didn't keep coming on across the field. He turned and went right straight up the field towards the goal post so that if he hadn't picked up uh, 10 yards for the first down, they were in a position to kick the field goal. This was the key play and it certainly kept their drive alive, and they did make the first down. A few plays later, uh, they're down about the uh, old 14-yard line, and they throw the X in to Boyd Dollar for a touchdown. We're going to have a look at that one, too. We're going to take a look at that one, too, in a minute. But that is really good football, and that's that's what you call uh, really doing what you want to do and handling like you own them when you can run a play like that and, and do it that well. I noticed, uh, as you pointed out, that... Uh, Taylor and Horning, when they came left, uh, Sam Huff would ordinarily, ordinarily be the man who would intercept that pass. That's they right, but took him he, right. Had, he had trailed over, in other words, following the play, expecting that little quick toss to, uh, to Taylor in the flat. I noticed uh, during the second quarter, too, I think Huff is getting a little annoyed. Uh, some of those pilots there, he's looked as if he'd like to belt somebody, and he's just uh, holding back because well, he knows he'd get thrown out. And these kind of games, uh, the championship game, as you know, it's a matter of pride, and more so today... Uh, they want to prove who's boss, and uh, it can be a little frustrating when you're on the short end of the score. Now, this next play, Hal, was the one that went for the touchdown. It was the X in to Dowler, who has been playing that wide flanking back all season. And I'd like to explain this play because this thing really opens up beautifully. We'll take a look at it on the chart. Here's Dowler out here who caught the touchdown pass, number 86. He's about six foot five. Well, he's about 230 pounds and has a great pair of hands and good speed for a big man. Now, this is what we call a flare-type pass, where we send out five receivers. Both Horning and Taylor are swinging out on this pass, and they immediately take these corner linebackers out with them when they do that. That's the first reaction because nobody else is here to cover them. These fellows have got to come out with them. Now, Dowler starts down the field straight at Eric Barnes and takes him back, and when Dowler... When he starts to move back, then he makes his break because he knows by this time that Kramer has also started down the field towards the safety man here and taking him back, and then his, it'll come clear for him coming across the middle, and that's exactly what happened. The linebackers are occupied by the swing men, so they, they take the pressure off of Dowler here. He has this linebacker, in other words, is not going to be able to ride him in. The same thing would be true over here had that been the point of attack because... Scott, the linebacker over here, would have had to come off with Horning. Therefore, McGee would have had some freedom going down the field. The fact that McGee is a good key receiver also holds this safety man over here. He can't come over and help out on the cross until it, the ball is in the air, and then, of course, it's too late. So let's take a look at it on videotape and see how well it opened up. It's a... Third down situation again with about 10 yards to go on the 18-yard line. Now you see both backs swinging out of the backfield, and there you see Dowler coming in on the cross, taking the ball and right straight into the end zone. 
And there again, that's one of those situations where you call them and execute them just like you own them. And of course, uh, one thing against the Giants today, they are getting a little home cooking from the Green Bay local fan. When uh, you're winning 24 to nothing, all those plays execute beautifully. <laughs> well, I'll they? say they do. Curly, uh, you've played in a couple of championship games with the Cleveland Browns. Uh, you won two National Football League titles, and I know you were a regular halfback at the time. I'm wondering uh, just how you fellas feel, uh, uh, say, uh, during the week coming up to the game and the night before the game. Can you tell me? Well, how the week before a championship game is, is a feverish week. I must tell you that as far as the ball club is concerned, you have to prepare just like any other ball game. You don't change your routine that you've been going on week after week, month after month. Your preparation for the game and everything is exactly the same. You put in special game plans. But the last two or three nights before a championship game, you'll find it pretty hard to get a good solid night's sleep. You're restless and there's just a lot of things building and keying up on your mind. And actually the last couple of days, the ball players are living on nervous energy. Uh, and they can almost uh, expend themselves before they get in the ball game, but they have that little extra thing that keeps them going. It's the big letdown afterwards that really takes it out of you. All right, Curly. In just a moment, we'll go back to Green Bay for some halftime activities. The first half of the world of sport featuring the greatest show in football is presented for your enjoyment by the Carling Breweries Limited. Brewers of Carling Red Cap Ale. The second half of today's game between the New York Giants and the Green Bay Packers is brought to you by Ford of Canada on behalf of your Ford dealer who sells and services the 1962 Galaxy, Fairlane, and Falcon. And by Cameo, the filter cigarette with just a touch of menthol. Curly, I see we have a little more time, and I'm delighted because I want to... Uh continue with this uh, talk about how you feel before a game. Now, uh, uh, what uh, final games did you play? And you were with Cleveland. Who'd you play? Well, in uh, the two championship games that I played with Cleveland in 1954, we played against Detroit, and uh, we beat them 56-10. to 10. And in 1955, the World's Championship game against the Rams in Los Angeles, we won 38-14. to 14. Well, let's talk about that Los Angeles one. Now, can All you right. remember... Uh, yeah, the game was played on a Sunday, was it? It, it was, and uh, it was the largest crowd that has ever witnessed a uh, National League championship game. There were over 85,000 in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Well, now, uh, let's uh, reminisce a bit here. Uh, what did you do on uh, Saturday night before the game? Well, we have a regular routine with the Browns, Hal. We all eat together around 6.30, and then we always go to a movie together in, in mass in a group, and we usually get a choice, and we vote and and decide which local movie and the nearest theater uh, we can see. And I've forgotten the one we saw. I'm sure I couldn't remember anything about it, but uh, that was our routine. And back to the hotel and bed around 10.30, and it's a pretty restless night because you're playing the game hours before it starts. All right, I think it's time, Curly, to go back to City Stadium in Green Bay where we'll see some halftime activities right after this message. Now, here's a commercial with a twist. The Falcon twist. You're going to get a new Falcon? A 62 Falcon. Everybody loves Falcon. So listen, Malcolm. Pick me up in your Falcon. I'll be ready at eight. I'll be there with my Falcon. We'll have a wonderful ride. And I'll be right at your side. Economical Falcon. Cost so little to run. With the money we save with a Falcon. We can sure have a barrel of fun. Everybody loves Falcon. Lots of reason to vote. Cause you get more, more, more from a Falcon. The car America loves the most. It's America's favorite. It's so economical. Low price, compact car. Oh, Malcolm. Go to your Ford dealer. You'll be welcome, Malcolm. Thank <laughs> you. 
This is Lindsay Nelson with Chris Schenkel here at City Stadium in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and the Lake Band from Milwaukee still performing here at halftime. Both teams are back on the field along the sideline. And while the Lake Band is completing its halftime show, you on a very fine halftime performance it is, perhaps we should explain for the benefit of fans who have uh, been sending a few wires here about the manner in which the Green Bay Packers got the ball on the 20-yard line just before the end of the first half. The line of scrimmage with the six and gate is over through. Kyle wrote in the end zone, and the ball was brought out to the 20 in the National Football League, an incompletion. On fourth down, in the end zone, is a touchback, and the ball comes out to the 20 and not to the line of scrimmage. That is the rule in the National Football League. Both teams back on the field here now, and the band still on uh, the goal line with uh, another number yet to play also. However, they are marching them off as the teams are ready to play football, and as we start the second half of the ball game, it's the Green Bay Packers 24 and the New York Giants nothing. Giants are going to be kicking off here because you'll recall that the Giants won the toss at the start of the ball game and elected to receive so at the start of this half it is the Packers who get the option and it is Pat Summerall who is putting the ball down on the kicking tee to kick off for the New York Giants. This is Summerall's first appearance in this ball game this afternoon. The deep men are Tom Moore number 25 and Herb Adderley number 26 deep for the Green Bay Packers to receive the kickoff. The Green Bay Packers having dominated the first half of this ball game and leading by a score of 24 to nothing. That hand is for the Lake fans from Milwaukee as they march off the field. In the first half, the New York Giants got only one first down rushing, two first downs passing, and one first down by penalty. The Giants picked up only 35 yards rushing against the Green Bay defense. The Packers had seven first downs rushing, five passing, one by penalty for 13 first downs. They had 101 yards rushing and 106 yards passing. All right, the kickoff, Pat Summerall. It's gonna be short. It's on the 20, and it's picked up at the 20-yard line, and returned up past the 35 by Tom Bevis. And it's going to be placed on the 36-yard line, put in play first and 10. So now the Green Bay Packers have the ball, first and 10, and they have it on their own 36-yard line. They lead by a score of 24 to nothing as we start the second half. Jimmy Patton is back in the ball game. He was removed as he was taken up in the first half. He is back there, deep safety for the New York Giants. Mark star number 15, the quarterback. Gives it off to Paul Horning. Rosie Greer, number 76, coming over on the tackle. And Joe Morrison, number 40. Paul Horning, number five. He's got a great deal of action carrying that football in the first half. Picked up only one yard here. So it is second down and nine as the ball moves to the 37-yard line. Star palmed the ball for a moment, running it out of the pocket, out of the 40, the 45, to the 50, and it's quite Star going to the 41-yard line, fumble the ball, it's picked up by Jimmy Patton, and Patton is running it to the 40, and he is being pulled down by Greg on the far side of the field, for is Greg number 75, so Jim Patton is the man who recovered the fumble. However, there's a penalty marker on the play, illegal procedure against the Green Bay Packers, declined because the Giants want the football, and they get it first and 10 on their own 42. So the Giants get a break early here. They have the ball on their own 42-yard line. Charlie Connolly, number 42, is starting this half at quarterback. Why he started start the ball game? Connolly starting now. Referee Rennick comes in and picks up the ball. Goes it across the field. He has called time, being followed by the Green Bay Packers over. The headlinesman Heiberger. Heiberger is number 48 there. The referee is George Rennick, number 52. So what have we here? Illegal procedure, he said, was the call. 
That's Kyle Roach, number 44. No captain of the New York Giants up there. We hope to get one here from George Winnicks any moment ourselves. Ball has been spotted now on the 47 yard line of the New York Giants. That's Kyle Roach, number 44, still uh, trying to get things explained to him. The Green Bay Packer offensive unit has come back onto the field. New York Giants defensive unit has come back on, although the offensive unit is not left entirely. And the chain has been extended uh, toward the Green Bay Packer goal. And who has the football? Well, it's being taken back now. Illegal procedure against the Green Bay Packers. The five-yard penalty has been assessed, and that is Andy Robustelli, player coach of the New York Giants, who uh, is talking to headlinesman Heiberger now. And apparently uh, things are going to proceed from right here. As the ball has been moved back to the 35-yard line. It is first down. And 15 yards to go as the chain is now extended. All right, this is Paul Harning. That's first and out in front of him. He cuts his back. To the 45 yard line. Huff and Robustelli. Huff, number 70. Robustelli, number 81. Coming over on the tackle. So the ball is on the 45-yard line. That will make it second down and five yards to go. Second down, five yards to go. He is left, dollar is right. Jim Taylor gets the football and goes for one yard, met by Sam Huff, number 70, along with Cliff Livingston, number 89. Again, of a yard on the play. So it is third down and four yards to go for the Green Bay Packers, who lead here by a score of 24 to nothing in the third quarter. Now another conference between referee Rennix and headlinesman Heiberger. This is over what down it is. It says third. All right, Max McGee is put to the left side and boiled out a dollar is flanked to the right side. Arning and Taylor in the running back positions. And Starr slipped down as he started back, hung a click, passes out into the flight, gets rid of it. It's an incomplete pass. Max McGee, the man for whom it was intended. Dick Lynch was covering him, so now it is fourth and four at the 46-yard line. And the Green Bay Packers get set for their first kicking situation of this ball game. Morrison and Wells are dropping back the deep men. Morrison is 40 and Wells is number 28. At Boyd Dollar will do the kicking for the Green Bay Packers, standing right now on his own 32-yard line. Bobbles it for a moment, it partially blocked. Running around, and Larry Hayes picks it up, and he fumbles it, and the Giants have recovered it. It is the Giants on the football. Cliff Livingston was the man who partially blocked it. Hayes had it for a moment, and then it was recovered by the New York Giants by Mickey Walker. The Giants in possession first and 10 at their own 46-yard line. Connerly has the football. He is swinging it out to Webster. Webster can not get away from Willie Davis, number 87. And so Davis... Number 87 with help from Tom Bettis, number 65. Pulled him down. Ball 
Off the five yards on the play, it is second and 15 at the 35. Del Chotnis, this part of the left side. Now rows back to the right side. It's a draw play, and again, it's losing yardage. Alex Webster carried on the draw as Connolly came back and handed it off. That one loses four yards back to the 31-yard line. But third and 19 now at the 31-yard line. A Green Bay defense pouring in on the New York Giants as Green Bay leads here by a score of 24 to nothing. Nine minutes, 50 seconds unofficially remaining to be played in the third quarter. Goffner is split to the left side. Road is back to the right side. Walton, the tight end, is split about three yards. Connerly retreating to throw. Looks for Schaffner. Instead throws to Walden, cutting across. And Joe Walden came across with the diving catch at the 50-yard line. He took the linebacker, Bill Forrester, number 71, out there with him. So it was Schaffner going deep and Walden cutting across. And the pass went to Walden at the 50. Not enough for the first down. It is fourth down and one yard to go. Fourth down and one yard to go. And so Chandler has come into the ball game now. Don Chandler, the punter, has come in for the New York Giants. And the Green Bay Packers have dropped back. Willie Wood, number 24, and Lou Carpenter, number 33. There they are, the deep men. Giants trail by 24 points here. Chandler kicking. High spiraling kick over the wood side of the field. He lets it go, and it goes out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. You see exactly where it's lined up as it's brought to the inbounds marker. Bob Sims with downfield covering in a hurry. And so the Green Bay Packers have the football. And they have it at their own 14 and a half yard line. We'll call it the 14 to start this series. All right, McGee is put left, Dallas flag right, Bart Starr, number 15, the quarterback. That's Jim Taylor, number 31, directly behind him. Sam Huff on the nose, across. Going for no game, Jim Taylor, carried. Tom Scott, number 82, the right outside linebacker, coming over to make the tackle. Second and 10 on the 14 for the Green Bay Packers. This is the first time in history that the National Football League Championship game has ever been played in Green Bay, Wisconsin, despite the fact that they've had a pro football team here for more than 40 years. It's a big day in Green Bay. He left, dollar right. Horning and Taylor, the running back. White star swinging it out to Horning, and it is going as an incomplete pass. Rosie Gray and Jim Katkavich, and they're putting the rush on Bart Starr. He fired it out to the front. That makes it third and ten at the 14-yard line. These Green Bay Packers are community-owned, incidentally. And now Taylor is coming out of the ball game and getting a hand. Jim Taylor gets a hand as he is replaced by Tom Moore, former Vanderbilt's car. That's Taylor. Taylor has sustained a kidney injury in the final game of the regular season at Los Angeles against the Rams. And it was problematic as to just how much he would be able to play in this ball game. He has been a big help, however, in that first drive. He was a tremendous help. All right, this is Horning carrying. Got short of the 20-yard line by Erich Barnes, number 49, a defensive left halfback. That will set up a punting situation for the Green Bay Packers. It's fourth and five at the 19-yard line. So Wells and Morrison are the deep men there. Morrison at the bottom of your screen and Joel Wells at the top. As Boyd Dollar will do the kicking. Gets this one off a long, high, spiraling kick. Morrison drops it at the 25, chases it around. Travel for it. They come up with the Green Bay Packers. Forrest Gregg has recovered the fumble. Forrest Gregg, number 75. And so now the Green Bay Packers have the football. It is at the 22-yard line. 
of the New York Giants, Forrest Gregg. Came over to the sideline, now coming right back out there. So the Packers are in possession, first and ten. This is Tom Moore carrying number 25. To the 16-yard line, Sam Huff, number 70 on the tackle, along with Joe Morrison, number 40. Green Bay Packers leading by 24 points and driving here. Second down and four yards to go for the Green Bay Packers on the New York Giants, 16. to the 15. Dick Majulewski, number 77 on the tackle, along with Rosie Greer, number 76, and Sam Huff, number 70. Ball is spotted squarely on the 15-yard line. Third down and three yards to go there. We have five minutes, 30 seconds, unofficially remaining to be played in the third quarter here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. With the Packers leading the Giants by a score of 24 to nothing and driving. Dallas flank to the right side. Max McGee has slipped to the left side. Right star has the ball throwing. And it is incomplete into the hands of Erich Barnes, who bounces the ball on the turf. Erich Barnes, number 49. Giants defensive left half back. Pass was intended for Paul Harding, who was swinging by him. And it simply goes as an incomplete pass. Fourth and three. And the field goal unit has come onto the field now for the Green Bay Packers. Star will hold and Horning will kick and it'll be from the 21-yard line. Second, the 22-yard line now. Horning kick is up and it's good. Packers 27 and the New York Giants nothing. Ford Fairlane for 1962. Completely new in quality, luxury, value. The 1962 Fairlane. Beautifully styled from every angle. Just look at its classic roof line. Thin, dramatically defined with the high fashion Thunderbird look. Look at its handsome full-width grill, gleaming, good-looking, with wide-spaced dual headlights. Look at its clean rear deck, beautifully proportioned, with Ford's traditional round tail lights. Styling excellence is typical of the new standards of quality engineering and design that are built into the 62 Ford Fairlane. Find out for yourself. See it. Drive it at your Ford dealer. First chance you get. This is Lindsey Nelson with Chris Schenkel in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And right now, you're going to see Ben Agajanian kick off for the Green Bay Packers, who have just kicked the field goal. Paul Horning did, who ran it up to 27 nothing. Deep men are Wells and Gators. Kickoff is sailing back and into the end zone and all the way out of the end zone. So it's a touchback to be put in play on the 20 yard line. If you are as confused as we have been by that penalty a moment ago and uh, the placement of the ball, uh, well, we've been trying to check around and find out. Chris Schenkel, what have you found out? Well, other than the fact that a uh, great deal of excitement has been generated by the fine play of the Packers. Everything now is a little bit confused. Some people thinking that the Packers had five downs, uh, including the penalty that apparently was a motion penalty back at the 35-yard line. So we're trying to check further, and when we get the word, we'll give it right to you. Lindsay right, Nelson. Chris Schickel. This is Charlie Conley retreating to throw the screen pass. He gets it out to Webster. Webster is being hauled out from behind by Henry Jordan, number 74 from Virginia. 
Webster moving it up to the 25-yard line. Again, a five yards on the play. The situation we're discussing is the fact that it was second and nine for the Packers on the 37. They drew the penalty, a five-yard penalty, and then it was set up as first and 15. And uh, they ran four more plays. Uh, and that is the situation being muchly discussed around the press box and around here right now. All right, Charlie Connolly, quarterback in there for the Giants. Intended for Walden, it's incomplete. Joe Walden, number 80, the man for whom it is intended. Dan Curry, number 58, the corner linebacker, taking him out there. Dale Schaffner had gone deep that time for the New York Giants. I'd like it third and five on the 25. This ball game has been dominated entirely by the Green Bay Packers here this afternoon on their home field. This stadium was opened in 1957. Phil King, number 24, is in their quarterback now, and Webster has gone out for the New York Giants. That is Chuck and Charlie Conley, 40 years old, from Mississippi. Running out of the pocket and throwing incomplete, intended for Phil King, number 24. Willie Davis, number 87, was pouring in there on him and running him out of the pocket. That sets up a punting situation, fourth and five for the Giants. Don Chandler comes in to do the kicking. And the Green Bay Packers drop back. Willie Wood and Lou Carpenter. Wood at the top of your screen, number 24, and Lou Carpenter at the bottom, number 33. Don Chandler, number 34, to do the punting for the New York Giants. Approximately four minutes remaining to be played in the third quarter. Chandler sails it out of there. Fair catch call for by Wood. for the fair catch. And Joel Wells bumped him right there. So it's a 15-yard penalty. He called for the fair catch, and you cannot touch him under those circumstances. But he was bumped, and so now the Green Bay Packers have it first and 10 at the 43-yard line of the New York Giants. So again, the Packers have the ball in Giant territory. He hits Dowler at the 40-yard line. Here it's Byrne, bulldogging out of bounds. Between the 30 and 35. Rip Livingston and Sam Huff lending assistance there. There's Boyd Dowler, number 86. Dowler was a quarterback in Colorado in college. Ball is being marked at the 32-yard line. So it's a first down. Across the way, you can see Y.A. Tittle warming up for the Giants. That's Tittle at the top of your screen throwing up there. Right moving up the middle, Paul Horn and Carey. Sam Huff on the tackle, along with Andy Robicelli. Being marked at the 26-yard line. Second down and four yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. Driving again deep into Giant territory. The Packers lead here by a score of 27 to nothing. Tom Moore and Paul Harning in the running back position. Bart Starr, number 15, is the quarterback. Dollar right on the line. McGee flanked to the left side. He throws to Dowler, and Dowler makes the catch inside, and it is completed at about the 13-yard line. He reached Barnes, the defender. Boy, Dowler is six feet five inches tall. He can reach up there, and the ball is being brought in marked now at the 13-yard line. First down play, so it's first and ten now. For the Green Bay Packers, that's a giant 13-yard line. Dallas on the line at the right, and McGee is flanked to the left side. This is Paul Harning throwing, and it's incomplete to Max McGee. 
Joe Marston and Dick Lynch covering. Majulewski was in there on Harding, but he managed to get it off anyway. Jimmy Taylor coming back into the ball game at fullback. And Tom Moore is coming out for the Green Bay Packers. Taylor was an All-American at LSU, 1957. That was Billy Cannon's sophomore year at LSU, but the big ball player on that team was this Jimmy Taylor. All right, Starr is retreating to throw. Throws to Kramer, and it's a touchdown! Ron Kramer! And with Joe Morrison, that he went around, and Kramer slipped out on the ice off in the corner. Kramer slipped on the ice after he left the field. He got out there on that hard play that is completely frozen and slipped on. But after he had scored the touchdown, his second of the day, Joe Morrison was the defender that he went around as he went into the end zone. And now it's Paul Horning to kick on the conversion attempt. It is up. And it's good. Offside against the Giants at that point was refused because it is good and there's time out on the field with the score of the Green Bay Packers 34 and the New York Giants nothing. It's just a touch, a gentle touch, a cooling touch of menthol. Reawaken your taste with Cameo, refreshingly different. With Cameo, you get only the coolness of menthol. You taste only the natural flavor of fine, fully matured tobaccos. Refreshing like a snowfall in summer. Try a pack of Cameo soon. They're filter tip, king size. There's just a touch, a gentle touch, a cooling touch of menthol. Reawaken your taste with Cameo. Refreshingly different. Agajanian will kick off again for the Green Bay Packers. And the deep Leonard Gators and Wells. After Agajanian kicked a couple short, they moved Gators and Wells up to about the 8-yard line. And then the last time, Agajanian kicked it right on into the end zone and out. So Agajanian again kicking a little short. And it is Joel Wells at the 10-yard line. Wells to the 15, to the 20, to the 25. Wells to the 30. Still going and gets it up to the 35-yard line. Joel Wells returning it. 21 on the tackle. Ball is spotted near the 34, so let's start this series first and 10 at the 34-yard line. And Y.A. Tittle is back in at quarterback for the New York Giants. Tittle started the ball game. The lead by Conley in the second quarter. Conley started the second half. Tittle is asking for quiet. And now he is uh, talking to the referee, and he is going to call him back in the huddle. Little got up there, apparently could not hear his signals, and a timeout has been called on the field here. The New York Giants trailing in this ball game by 34 points. Now they're set to go as the clock uh, will be started again. Del Schaffner sits to the left side. Kyle Roach flanked to the right side. Bob Gators is the left halfback, and he hits Roach. The Giants got the football. It is Joe Walton, number 80. Roach took the pass, fumbled, and Walton recovered. And so the Giants retain possession at their own 48 yard line, first and 10. About a minute and a half remaining to be played in the third quarter here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Schaffner splits to the left side, Roach flank right. Tittle retreating to throw. And he throws to Schaffner, his first catch of the day. Simak, number 27, is there. 
And Willie Wood, number 24, also on the tackle. That's the first down for the Giants now. First and 10 as they have the ball. On the 33-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Up until that moment, Jesse Whitman has been doing a fine job of covering Dell Schaffner out here this afternoon. Why, Tittle slipping as he started back for the wall, so it is simply going to be grounded back there. Schaffner had gone deep. He was the deep man. And Tittle trying to get back in a hurry. Pull down on the 39-yard line. Second and 16 now. That is the packet defense. Number 87 is Davis. 79 is Hanner. 74 is Jordan. And 83 is Bill Quinlan. 58 there is Dan Curry. 71 is Forrester. 24 is Willie Wood. 47 is Whitman. 46 is Griminger. All right, Schaffner is split part of the left side. Little hits him. And he is hit immediately by Willie Wood, number 24. Schaffner and Tittle are roommates, incidentally, on the road. So the ball goes to the 31 yard line. That's going to make it third down and eight yards to go. Third and eight for the Giants. And there's the gun. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Green Bay Packers 34 and the New York Giants nothing. Quiet as midnight. Quick, quick as a minute. That's the essence of Galaxy. This shining new Galaxy by Ford. Its thrust is pure Thunderbird, up to 401 horsepower. A 62 Galaxy now outperforms America's most expensive luxury cars. And does it in a whisper. Silence has always been an important test of how well, how solidly, how conscientiously a car is built. And Galaxy is as silent as a secret. Because this Galaxy is the most carefully crafted in Ford's long history of fine craftsmanship. How long has it been since you've driven a new Ford? Try one soon. For something wonderfully quick, something wonderfully quiet has happened. Drive this new Galaxy soon at your Ford dealers. Lombardi with the white cap on there, and Bingston with the black hat on, his defensive coach. And across the way, Al Sherman, the rookie coach of the New York Giants and coach of the year in the National Football League. All right, Y.A. Tittle retreating to throw now, and he throws to Rote, and it's incomplete. Grimminger was the defender, number 46 in the case. So that is going to make it fourth down and eight yards to go for the New York Giants. Incidentally, Jack Stroud is now playing offensive right tackle in place of Larson. And Mickey Walker, number 65, is playing the right guard position. And it's for the New York Giants. Guard can be used interchangeably at guard or tackle. All right, the Giants trail by 34 points. This is fourth and eight at the 31-yard line. Tittle, Gators, King, and Rode in the backfield. Now they move King up into the slot as they widen Walton out. Little retreating, and he picks up Henry Jordan. And there, along with Dave Hanner, number 79, Bill Quinlan, number 83, pulled him down. That was fourth down, so the ball goes over. First and ten for the Green Bay Packers on their own 40-yard line. for the Green Bay Packers, both offensively and defensively, as Bart Starr, the quarterback, has yet to be touched by a giant defensive player thanks to the great blocking of the men up front. All right, Chris Schenkel, there is Starr, number 15. Gives it off to Paul Horning. Horning is hit at the line of scrimmage by Jim Ketkavich, number 75, and Nick Marcielewski, number 77. And Sam Huff, number 70 in there.
Packers right now have Tom Moore running in at fullback instead of Jim Taylor. Green Bay Packers, who won the Western Conference Championship last year but lost to the Philadelphia Eagles in the championship game. They repeated as Western Conference champs this year, and they are leading in the championship game over the Giants, 34 to nothing in the final quarter. Here's a quick pitch to Tom Moore. Can't go, and he's being filled back in the 35-yard line. Dick Lynch, number 22, Sam Huff, number 70, coming in to make the tackle. Tom Scott, number 82 there. So there's a loss of five yards on that play, make it third and 15. And here comes Jim Taylor onto the field for the Green Bay Packers, number 31. Racing into the huddle and Tom Moore is coming off. It is the depth of the Green Bay Packers that brought them home well ahead of the pack this season because with their army losses and with their injuries, had they not had the depth, they might have been in bad trouble, but they were able to pin men like Tom Moore right into that lineup and feel the damage hardly at all. It's a morning carry. On the pass from Bart Starr, Jim Patton and Sam Huff on the tackle, and that is Huff still on the ground. Still not enough for the first down. It is fourth and two at the 48-yard line. Wells and Marsh in the deep for the Giants as Dollar goes into punt formation for the Green Bay Packers. Dolly gets it off. Fair catch call for it's the 21-yard line by Joe Morrison. So that is where the Giants will take over first and ten. 12 minutes, 22 seconds, unofficially remaining to be played in this National Football League Championship game in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The Green Bay Packers were first organized as a pro football team by Curly Lambeau back in 1919. The Indian Packing Company was touched for $500 to pay for the sweaters and the stockings. In return, the team was called the Packers. Well, the Indian Packing Company has long since gone by the board, but the Packers survive and prosper. Y.A. Tittle running the attack now, number 14 for the New York Giants. Throws a long pass to Schaffner. Whitten has the football. Jesse Whitten is intercepted, and Schaffner is riding along his back to pull him down. You saw Tymac, number 27, get into the act. The spot is going to be marked where the interception occurred. And the Green Bay Packers take over at their own 38-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, I doubt if uh, anybody will see a better game played by an individual team that the Green Bay Packers are showing to millions on television and a record Green Bay crowd right here today of 39,029 pay. The largest crowd here at Green Bay because of the addition of temporary seats here in this Bay City. All right, Chris Schenkel, Green Bay in charge again at Bart Starr. Number five is calling starting signals. So it's a quick pop pass to Dollar, and he dropped it. He was popped immediately by Erich Barnes, number 49. And Sam Huff, number 70, both jumping in there. That is Huff, number 70, you see right there. Goes as an incomplete pass, second and ten now. For the Packers, at the 38-yard line. If you like success stories, take a look at Bart Starr, the quarterback of Green Bay, when he comes up here. He was quarterback on an Alabama football team that lost every game of the season. He wasn't drafted until the 17th round. He broke in on the Tobin Road, had to fight off Babe Perilli and Lamar McCann to get this job. He got it for good this year and his bottom home a winner. Bart Starr, number 15, from Montgomery, Alabama. This is Tom Moore, number 25, Jerry. Sam Huff, number 70, and Joe Morrison, number 40, on the tackle. It's at the 41-yard line. Gain of three, it is third down and seven for the Green Bay Packers. He left and Dollar right. Tom Moore and Paul Horning in the running back position. You saw Robustelli break across. So the penalty marker goes down. You saw Andy Robustelli. It's Majuleski also moving over. So the penalty is against the New York Giants. Five-yard penalty for offside. 
Makes it third down and two yards to go now. Or the Packers at their own 46-yard line. Green Bay Packers 34, the New York Giants nothing at City Stadium in Green Bay. This is Paul Horning going for enough to get the first down and into Giant territory. Sam Huff and Dick Modulewski on the tackle, along with Cliff Livingston, number 89. Ball is being spotted at the 47-yard line. First and 10 for the Green Bay Packers in Giant territory. Jim Taylor is back in at fullback, and Tom Moore has come out now for the Green Bay Packers. Paul Hunting still in the other running back position. Jim Taylor carrying it on the draw, and Taylor finds an opening, goes to the 30-yard line, comes to the outside. And he is not the 15-yard line, and he is being run out of bounds by Erich Barnes, number 49. He got a nice block from number 86, Boyd Dollar, downfield. Jimmy Taylor, bursting through, going to the outside. It's at the 14-yard line. First down, 10 yards to go for the Packers as they are leading 34 to nothing and driving. Boyd Dowell is on the line to the right flank, and Max McGee is flanked to the left. This is Paul Horney. Hey, he runs into a mass of white jerseys on the far side. Dick Lynch came up there. Jim Katkavich, Sam Huff. That is Forrest Gregg, number 75, who was trying to lead the player on there. A loss of six as the ball is spotted at the 20th, second and 16 now for the Packers. All Harning, Louisville, Kentucky, Heisman Trophy winner and All-American quarterback. The number one draft choice of the Green Bay Packers when he came into the Pro League. They tried him at quarterback, he couldn't make it. They tried him at fullback, he didn't make it. They tried him at halfback, and he became the most valuable player in the league. Star swinging it out to Paul Horning. Blockers out in front of the screen. Horning going to the 12-yard line. Majulewski coming up on the tackle along with Joe Morrison, number 40. Majulewski's number 77. He's an All-American in Maryland. Ball is at the 12-yard line. Make it third down and eight yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. They say that these Green Bay Packers are a community project and a regional religion. Bart Starr retreating. Going to the corner. And it is incomplete. Intended for Ron Kramer, number 88. Joe Morrison covering over there. Fourth and eight on the 12, and the field goal team has come onto the field now. The field goal unit has come onto the field for the Green Bay Packers. They lead 34 to nothing with eight minutes, 15 seconds, unofficially remaining to be played in this game. The difference between winning and losing is about $2,000 per man. Winners will get something over $5,000 each. Losers will get something over $3,000 each. All right, it'll be a 19-yard field goal attempt with Star holding and Paul Horning kicking. It's up, and it's good. So there's time out on the field with the score of the Green Bay Packers, 37 and the New York Giants, nothing. There's just a touch, a gentle touch, a cooling touch of mental. Reawaken your taste with Cameo. Refreshingly different. With Cameo, you get only the coolness of menthol. You taste only the natural flavor of fine, fully matured tobaccos. Refreshing, like ice on a day in June. Try a pack of Cameo soon. They're filter tip, king size. There's just a touch, a gentle touch, a cooling touch of menthol. Reawaken your taste with Cameo.
This is Lindsey Nelson with Chris Schinkel in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Ben Agajanian will kick off in the deep end. Gate is number 35 and Joel Wells number 28 as you see them from our ground level camera. Ben Agajanian, 42 years old, boots the ball. Gator is on the five yard line. Gator to the 10 to the 15. Gator to the 20, skates a yard and goes to the 25 and is hit just across the 25 yard line. That'll be put in play at the 26. Willie Wood came up to make the tackle. Y.A. Tittle is going to run the attack now for the New York Giants. Giants have been shut out thus far this afternoon by the Green Bay Packers. Gators, Webster, Roach. And the ball is fumbled. Recovered by the Giants. Back about the 22. As it is Gators who fell on the ball number 35. As Tittle fell and uh, dropped the ball as he did. He bounded around. He couldn't get to it. He couldn't move. So the ball is on the 22. A loss of four. Second and 14. Now Phil King is coming to the ball game, and you see Alex Webster leaving on the far side. King is in at fullback, number 24 for the New York Giants. Del Schaffner split far to the left side, rode his flank to the right side, and Y.A. Tittle retreats to throw. Throws to Schaffner, and that is Whittenden right on his back. Jesse Whittenden, number 47. That's Ray Nitschke, number 66. Willie Wood, number 24. But Tittle hits Schaffner, and it's at the 36-yard line. First and 10. This has been an afternoon when very little has gone right for the New York Giants and very little has gone wrong for the Green Bay Packers as they lead 37 to nothing. These teams played once in the exhibition series and the Packers won 20 to 17. They played once during the regular season and the Packers won 20 to 17. All right, Tittle is winking it out to Kyle Root. Ray Nitschke was red dogging in there on Tittle. Ray Nitschke was red dogging in on Tittle and Spill got it out there intended for Roach, but Tittle is just now back on his feet, loosening up a little. And now John Simak is coming out of the ball game, and Imlin Tunnell is going in in the secondary for the Green Bay Packers. Imlin Tunnell, who saw a lot of years of great service with the Giants, has replaced Simak in the secondary. Second and ten at the 36 for the Giants. And off is to Phil King, and the Chief is being spilled for a loss. Bill Quinlan, number 83, firing it on him, former Michigan Stater, who came to Green Bay from Cleveland, as did three of that front four, as a matter of fact. Third down and 12 yards to go, a loss of two on that last handoff. We were speaking of how the Packers got their name. The Giants got their name when Tim Meyer bought the team back in 1925, and he named them uh, in honor of John McGraw's baseball Giants, who also plays the polo ground. The Giants have gone to San Francisco, of course, now the baseball Giants. It is Grimminger incomplete. It was intended for road, and Grimminger sort of leaned over and tried to grab it and couldn't hang on. Grimminger's number 46. So it is fourth and 12 from the 34-yard line. A punting situation of Don Chandler is coming to do the kicking. Willie Wood and Lou Carpenter are the deep men. Wood at the top of your screen and Carpenter at the bottom. 37 to nothing. The Packers leading the Giants. Now it's across the 30 to the 25. And it's going to be blown dead right there. That'll be first and ten at the 25-yard line for the Green Bay Packers. And as the Packers take over here at City Stadium, the Giants haplessly trying to avert a shutout. There have been very few in the history of the National Football League title game. The fact the first started in Milwaukee in 1939 when the Green Bay Packers shut out the New York Giants 27 to nothing. And the great Packers are doing it again here this afternoon. All right, Bart stars the quarterback. Tom Moore is in there at fullback right now. Here's the pitch to Moore. Turns the corner. Gets across the 30-yard line. Cliff Livingston, number 89, coming over on the tackle, along with Ewitch Barnes, number 49. All 
Ball is on the 31-yard line, and now Paul Horning has gone out of the ball game, and coming in is Elijah Pitts. Horning is getting a standing ovation as he comes off the field. There is Paul Horning getting a standing ovation from these fans. There they are up and on their feet. Jerry Knaffel has gone in at end also, replacing Kramer. Knaffel's in it in. Looking on at four yards to go. This is Moore finding a big hole. It's all the way back to the secondary. Here is Barnes, number 49. Rosie Greer, number 76, coming across. It's a first down for the Green Bay Packers. And now Max McGee has come off the field, and Max McGee is getting a big hand as he has come off here. There he is, number 85, Max McGee. Lou Carpenter has replaced him, number 33, and he has split to the left side this time. So Knaffel and Carpenter, the ends in for Green Bay right now. Pitts and Moore are the running backs. This is Elijah Pitts. Big Rosie Greer, number 76. Makes the tackle with help from Joe Morrison, number 40. Now Boyd Dollar has come out of the ball game. Boyd Dollar has come out of the ball game. Lee Hawkins has come in now, replacing Dollar. Lee Hawkins, number 81. Second down and nine yards to go. This is Pitts again. Balls across the 45-yard line. Andy Robustelli made the tackle. Now John Roach is going into the ball game. Roach is going into the ball game, and Bart Starr is coming out. Let's do the hand for Bart Starr. The Packers getting a hand as they're being brought out one by one with two and a half minutes remaining to be played in this championship game. The Packer fans have waited 17 years for another championship. They will take full advantage of this New Year's Eve celebration. It's carrying Sam Huff making the tackle. Help from Jim Katkavich. Ball is spotted on the 40-yard line. It is fourth and 12. And now, with two minutes remaining, there's timeout on the field with the score of the Green Bay Packers, 37, the New York Giants, nothing. Montreal's colorful, bustling, crowded, ball-secure market, as seen by George Fair. Look at the narrow little streets. Hey, is that car actually going to drive through all those push carts, wagons, and people? Well, if any car can make it, this one can. It's the new 62 Ford Falcon. Watch how beautifully it handles. See that? That's Falcon maneuverability in action. Parking. Take your pick of the spots. Falcon fits where others won't. Trunk space. Falcon's got loads of it. 23.7 cubic feet to be exact. And the way Falcon looks. Beautiful, neat, trim lines. Falcon goes up to 35 miles in a gallon of regular gas. Falcon goes up to 6,000 miles between oil changes. Falcon is at your Ford dealers now. The 62 Ford Falcon, Canada's best-selling compact. With two minutes remaining, it's a fourth and twelve situation, so the Packers will be in position to punt. Boy, Dollar going into the ball game to do the punting. Dropping back now. Wells and Morrison to the deep men. Now they get it off. A long, high, spiraling kick, driving Morrison back. He lets it go and hits on the five. And it is grounded by Herb Adderley, number 26. Adderley, number 26, grounds the ball. And it's going to be at the nine yard line. You know, the giant defensive unit is one of the proudest units in pro football. They had played 105 games as a unit coming in here. They, of course, were the unit in the 1956 game won by the Giants over the Bears. The Green Bay Packers this afternoon have devastated that defensive unit. 
The Giants now facing a shutout. Have the ball first and ten on their own. Nine on the FYA Tittle to run the T attack. He gives it to Gators on a halfback draw. And he goes across the 11 yard line. He picked up only two. So it is second down and eight yards to go for the New York Giants. One minute, 22 seconds, unofficially remaining. This place will be a madhouse the moment that gun sounds ending this ball game. These fans have waited 17 years for a winner. They have waited more than 40 years for a championship in Green Bay. This is the first time the championship game has ever been played here. They will make the most of it, believe you me. This is why a turtle throwing to Del Schaffner, sideline pattern, incomplete. Whitten and covering. Third and eight at the 11 as the incomplete pass, of course, stops the clock. Green Bay in one of its proudest moments right here, of course, leading by a score of 37 to nothing in the championship game. Pete Hall has come in replacing Kyle Rote now for the New York Giants. This town, of course, is rich in football tradition. They have starred names like Don Hudson and Arnie Herber and Cal Herbert and C. Sisbell and Tony Canadeo. But none greater than this unit they have on the field right now, here this afternoon. All right, shotgun formation for the Giants. First time this afternoon, direct pass situation. And so Tittle gets it drops back to throw. And he overthrew Hall, and it is intercepted on the far side by Adderley. Herb Adderley, number 26 for Michigan State, is hit a buggy. Going to the outside, Adderley to the 20. Still going, and he gets to the 16-yard line. Herb Adderley intercepted. Mickey Walker made the tackle. And ladies and game for weeks to come, the praise can only be heaped on the great Green Bay Packers and nothing in the way of praise can be said for the performance by the New York Giants today as these two teams are meeting for the fourth time in championship play and coming into it, the city fighters were right when they renamed the city Titletown, USA and the players have just as much confidence as the city fathers. Titletown, USA it is. It's a happy day and Green Bay and the Packers have the ball. First and 10 on the 16 yard line. They have roached the quarterback, 25 seconds unofficially remain to be played in this ball game. Roach simply keeps it on the quarterback's knee. Just about the line of scrimmage slipped down, and now they can let the clock run out if they wish. Andy Robuscelli made that last tackle. The clock is running out, and they're going to let it run out. They're not making any attempt to huddle. The crowd has started on the field. The players have started for the dressing room. The gun is started. The ball game's over, and the Green Bay Packers have won the championship. Now watch from that house seeing the Giants trying to get to the tunnel to get to the dressing room. They had started before the gun. The Green Bay Packers trying to get into that tunnel, too. Strangely enough, the announcement was made that the goalpost would be protected. Fans were asked not to try to tear them down, and this is about the quietest goalpost situation I have ever seen at the conclusion of a championship game, Chris. And ladies and gentlemen, Ali Sherman was the first one across the field to congratulate Vince Lombardi, who has a sweet victory today after losing a heartbreaker in Philadelphia last year for the championship. And Vince Lombardi has most certainly a tremendous record as head coach in the National Football League. All the way today, and the Green Bay Packers were not kidding. Touchdown scored by Kramer, twice, Dowler, Horning, Horning three field goals, and what domination of professional football. Right, Chris, and that's the end of the game with the final score of the Green Bay Packers 37 and the New York Giants nothing. It's just a touch, a gentle touch, a cooling touch of mental your taste with cameo refreshingly different with cameo you get only the coolness of menthol you taste only the natural flavor of fine fully matured tobacco refreshing like a snowy sleigh ride in the middle of july try a pack of cameo soon they're filter tip king size there's just a touch a gentle touch a cooling touch of mental reawaken your taste with cameo refreshingly different the 
Green Bay Packers have won the championship of the National Football League by defeating the New York Giants 37 to nothing. And to tell you something of how they did it, here is Chris Schenkel. Okay, Lindsey Nelson, in a game that was played in less than two and one half hours, which is most unusual, it was probably the longest afternoon for Giant football fans wherever they are, and of course, Giant football players. 37 to nothing, the final score, with Paul Horning accounting for 19 of the points, and of course, that is fitting because he has been the National Football League leader the last three years, totaling in the regular season 146 points this year, with Dowler catching a 13-yard touchdown pass. Ron Kramer catching two from Bart Starr, one for 14 yards, another for 13 yards. Horning three field goals, one from 17 yards away, another from 22, and then the third from 19 yards. So in a short game, the Packers vanquish the New York Giants, the end 1961 in the best of fashion with a great 37 to nothing victory, the fourth shutout in the history of the National Football League championship game. All right, Chris Schenkel is still working on that goal post pretty well, trying to get it down. And despite the fact that the season has ended here in Green Bay, there is still plenty of football coming your way on NBC. For instance, tomorrow. Well, Curly, we're back here in Toronto, and uh, I think it looks to me like Green Bay kind of scalped the New York Giants. Well, I think we ought to get a plane to Green Bay tonight to celebrate New Year's Eve. That would be the spot to be, oh, wouldn't it? Oh, boy, I'll say it will. Be terrific. Well, uh, at any rate, uh, the New York Giants, in spite of the fact that they did get trimmed 37 to nothing, they did provide a lot of thrills over the National Football League season for uh, us Canadian fans up here. Well, they certainly did, and for Ali Sherman and the whole Giant uh, crew, now they can put away their scouting reports and their playbooks and uh, just take a look at these films and start planning for next year and see where they may have to rebuild. I was going to say, I don't think they'll be able to quit work because it looks like a big rebuilding job is in store for the Giants. Well, very definitely. They've done an exceptional job, and I think Ali Sherman, for his first year of head and coach, should really get the pats on the back. No question about it, he deserved the Coach of the Year award because he took this club that last year lost four of its last five ball games and brought it along this season, and uh, the results were fantastic. Uh, they knew their problems. They knew they lacked team speed offensively. They got Del Schaffner and Walton and Wells to help that situation, and Gators, and maybe they'll get a lot of mileage out of these fellows in the next few years, but they're going to have a big job all the way in rebuilding. Kind of unfortunate, too, but uh, that's football. Uh, most of the talk this afternoon has been about uh, Bart Starr and uh, Paul Hornung, who uh, played outstanding football games, but there are a couple of fellows up there on the offensive line for the Green Bay Packers, like Jim Ringo and uh, Fred Thurston. Boy. You can't say enough about those fellows, and Greg and Masters, that whole offensive line, and Kramer, the the closed offensive end, uh, not only is a fine receiver, but he's a great blocker, too. And when you have fellows like that uh, doing a job out in front, uh, boy, it makes it tough for the opposing team. In all the games we've seen this year, Curly, I have never seen the Giants physically manhandled the way they were today. We saw some flashes of it six weeks ago when we saw the Packers uh, and uh, the Giants meet earlier in that 20-17 to 17 contest but not like they handled them today. It was phenomenal. This fellow, Ringo, you know, is really not big as offensive centers go. He's just six feet and about 225, 30 pounds, but he has a tremendous thrust when he snaps that ball back to the quarterback. Is a terrific initial charge, and he's the key man in there, and along with Thurston and Greg and, of course, Kramer, the fine offensive guard that they lost a few weeks ago with a broken ankle, but they were able to move Masters out to tackle and bring Greg into the other offensive guard, and those fellows really do a fine job of crisp blocking. If you'll notice a couple times, I said, just look at that offensive line of Green Bay, and we saw their initial charge into the giant defense, and you can just see that explosion, and there seems like there's a uncoil of about a yard of heads bopping and popping back uh, when you see those fellows move out. The line we haven't talked much about, too, is Vince Lombardi. He must be a wonderful man. Well, he is. He's a very fine fundamentalist, and the thing that he tries to do, and he certainly did it today, is to beat the opponent at their strength. And if you'll notice, he worked against uh, Robustelli and Greer and Mojaleski consistently in this ballgame to beat the Giants at their strength and take a little uh, oomph out of the powder cage. Well, Curly, it's uh, just about the end of the line now for the National Football League for this year. In fact, it is. And I certainly want to thank you for, uh, Curly, I might tell our listeners, lives, uh, works in New York and lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. And uh, most weeks, he flies up here. <laughs> I say that because last week he got snowed in. Yeah. But, uh, Curly, it's been uh, a great pleasure working with you. 
I've really enjoyed it myself. I've learned a lot of football from you, and I know the fans out there have, too. Well, Hal, I want to tell you that it's really been my pleasure. I've really enjoyed every weekend that I've come to Toronto. I've made a lot of fine friends, and I want to thank you because it's been a pleasure working with you. You've made it, the job so easy for me in, in unfamiliar circumstances. I want to thank Ty Lindbergh, our producer, and all of the staff of CBS Sports Department for the wonderful, wonderful cooperation they've given me. And I've really enjoyed it, and I'm going to look forward to doing this a lot more. It's been too fast of a season, Hal. We'll Happy see you next year, year for two. Same, same to you. I'll see you in Green Bay tonight. Okay. <laughs> Friends, uh, next week, the World of Sport returns to its regular time slot of Saturday afternoon. We'll have Cross Canada Curling Series, and we'll see a Western semifinal. And now, that wraps up our football season for 1961. This is Hal Kelly, along with Curly Morrison, saying so long for now.